Good evening, everyone. And welcome to the Joint Planning and Zoning Board and Board of Commissioners meeting of November the 30th, 2021. I am Brake Simmons, the Planning and Zoning Chair. Well, prior to this meeting, invitations to the Zoom meeting had been sent to all board members, commissioners, staff, applicants participating in this meeting. All participants should keep their systems on mute and you will need to manually unmute your microphone or telephone in order to speak. Remember to place yourself back on mute once you have finished speaking in order to minimize background noise during the meeting. I will now turn the meeting over to Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones to introduce and confirm the presence of the commissioners. Madam Chair. Right, thank you so much, Chairman Simmons. Uh, Board of Commissioners, thank you. If we could just, when I call roll, just acknowledge your presence tonight. District 1, Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Present. District 2, and Vice Chairman uh, Kelly Robinson. Present. District 4, Ann jones Guider. Present. Ramona Jackson-Jones, Chairman Present. And District 3 is not here with us tonight, uh, Terenia Carthen. So uh, we do have a quorum, uh, Board of Commissioners. And thank you so much. And I yield back to you, Chairman Simmons. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, also present tonight are members of the Planning and Zoning Board. If you would confirm your presence as I call your name. Our Vice Chairman, Rob Thomas. Present. Teresa Knowles. Present. Brandon Penniman. Mr. Penniman. You may not have made it over yet. Frank Payne. Present. Kirk Nicholson. Present. And Oric Curry. Present. And Brandon, have you joined the meeting yet? I'm sure he'll be here shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have a quorum though. Ron Roberts, our planning and zoning manager will now introduce the county staff, planning and zoning staff is present in the meeting. Mr. Roberts. Uh, thank you, Chairman Simmons. County attorneys, Ken Bernard and Michael Coleman are on the, on the, on the call tonight. County Administrator Sharon Subedan, um, Development Services Director um, James Worthington, Transportation Director Miguel Valentin, Zoning Administrator Phil Schaefer, Senior Planner Allison Duncan, and the Clerk of the Planning and Zoning Board Johanna Womack are in attendance, Chairman. Thank you very much. There's a reversionary clause that applies to each rezoning, and that is the applicant, the agent, or the property owner has 24 months to vest the zoning change after the Board of Commissioners has granted an approval. Tonight's procedure, I will conduct a public hearing for each item. Mr. Roberts will announce each application followed by planning and zoning member staff who will present the application in full. Then either the applicant or the applicant's representative will have 15 minutes to present their request. Members of the public in favor of the application will be able to present their information. They will have three minutes per person for a total of 30 minutes to speak on behalf of an application. Members of the public in opposition to the application will be able to present their information. They also will have three minutes per person for a total of 30 minutes to speak in opposition of an application. After the opposition completes their input, or 30 minutes has elapsed, the public hearing will be closed. At this point, the staff will clarify any points of the zoning case. If the staff is unable to satisfy the board's questions, the board will then ask the applicant for points of clarification. And this is not a time for the applicant to represent their entire case. The planning and zoning board will then entertain a motion. Okay, our first agenda item tonight will be the approval of the minutes of the October the 4th, 20, the November the 4th, 2021 Planning and Zoning and Board of Commissioners meeting. After reviewing these minutes, does any planning and zoning member have any comments, changes, or questions to the minutes? Hearing none, I will call for a vote. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the November the 4th Planning and Zoning Board of Commissioners meeting? 
This is Frank Payne. I recommend approval uh, for the November 4th, 2021 meeting. A uh, second. I have a motion and a second. Do I have a any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I will call for the vote. Mr. Thomas? Yay. Ms. Knowles? Yay. Mr. Peniman? Yay. All right, you're joining us. Mr. Curry? Yay. Mr. Payne? Yay. Mr. Nicholson? Yay. Thank you very Yay. much. Planning is on board. We have a unanimous approval of the minutes of the November the 4th, 2021. I will turn it over to Madam Chairman for approval of the Board of Commissioners. Madam Chair. All right. Thank you so much, Chairman um, Simmons. Board of Commissioners, you've had an opportunity to review the November 4th, 2021 uh, minutes. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion about the minutes, Board of Commissioners? Okay, we have a motion and a second. When I call you district, please respond accordingly. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District four? District four? Yes. <laughs> Chairman, yes. We have a full, a full unanimous vote in the motion, carry. I yield back Madam, to you. Madam Chair? Mm -hmm. Yes, Vice Chairman. Just as a point of clarity, we just approved the meeting minutes from November 4th. The date is what, November 30th? We, do we have two meetings in this month or does this represent December? Can you or Chairman Simmons explain why we're having this meeting not in December or whatever the intention is, just for the record, please? Thank you. Okay, um, Chairman Simmons, do you have an explanation about the meeting? By I will yield, I will yield that to Mr. Roberts, Roberts, who does the scheduling. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, so, Commissioner Robinson, we uh, work with uh, Lisa Watson on the scheduling for these meetings and the December meeting, I don't recall why we uh, bumped it to November. I just knew there was a scheduling issue for for doing it in December, the, the first week of December. So that's why we're, we're having this last regularly scheduled meeting today. Okay, so you've answered my question. So this is the last meeting of the year. There will not be a meeting in December, barring um, you know the chairman's calling a special call. Is that accurate? That is accurate. The only the next meeting, Commissioner Robinson, will be December the 14th at 4 p.m. Um, and it is a special called meeting that was outside the regularly scheduled meeting. Ah, so there is a meeting in December. That's what I'm asking. Okay, duly noted. Um, I yield the floor, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, okay. And uh, what was your response to the minutes, Vice Chair? I believe you said no, yes. that was it. Yeah, okay. I already said yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Commissioner Guyton, you said yes. I said yes. We have a five, a four unanimous vote in the motion carry. I yield back to you, Chairman uh, Simmons. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point in time, Mr. Roberts, would you introduce the first agenda item, which I believe needs to be untabled before we can take that up? That's correct, Chairman. It does need to be untabled from the November 4th meeting. Okay, at this point in time, planning and zoning members, I would ask for a motion to untable LT Acquisitions LLC Z2021-68 and S2021-75. Do I have a motion? Yes, I have to make the motion. It's Rob Thomas to untable Z2021-68 and S2021-75. And Mr. Right. Chairman, this is Teresa Knowles, I second. Thank you very much. I have a uh, motion, I have a second planning and zoning board. Do we have any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll call for a vote to uh, untable Z2021-68, S2021-75. Mr. Thomas? Yay. Ms. Knowles? Yay. Mr. Curry? Yay. Mr. Peniman? Yay. Mr. Payne? Yay. Mr. Nicholson? Mr. Nicholson? Yay. Okay. Oh, yay. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a unanimous uh, motion to untable 
those two items. Madam Chairman, I'll throw it over the planning and over to the Board of Commissioners with uh, approval to untable Z2021-68, S2021-75. Thank you so much, Chairman Simmons. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to untable Z2021-68, S2021-75, Lit Acquisitions, LLC? The move is recommended yeah, by the planning zone. to do so. I'll second it. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any discussion, board? Okay, when I call you district, please respond accordingly. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District four? Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 4-0 unanimous vote in the motion, Carrie, and I yield back to you, Chairman Simmons. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chairman. Mr. Roberts, would you introduce LT Acquisitions LLC uh, information? Yes, yes, I will. Z2021-68 and S2021-75. The applicant is LIT Acquisitions LLC, property owner Carolyn and Robert Woods and Helen Buchanan. The location is 2681 and 2683 Bright Star Road and a vacant tract of land within land lot 163 District 2, Section 5, Parcels 3, 13, and 16. The current zoning is RLD. Um, the request is for light industrial and the uh, special use permit that they're, they're requesting is for a 50% lot coverage in the Dog River Secondary Basin. The size of this parcel is 37.46 acres. Uh, it's District 4. The proposed use is industrial warehouses. Staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Um, this is uh, Phil Schaefer's case, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh... Mr. Roberts, Mr. Schaefer, would you uh, present the findings, please? Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. The uh, property, as uh, Mr. said, so as we learned, the property's on the west side of Bright Star Road. Um, the properties now are, two of them are developed with residences and one is undeveloped. There are state waters on the property. Much of the property is still wooded. The applicant <laughs> is proposing industrial warehousing a 220,000 square foot building and a 121,000 square foot building. These would be single docks with truck bays on one side and uh, employee parking uh, along the short or the opposite side from the truck bays. The issue for them was lot coverage in the Dog River Secondary Basin. You are allowed to have a maximum of 25% lot coverage with a special use permit. However, you are allowed to go up to 50%. Um, currently, the way the configuration of the property was cited, they're between 45 and 47 percent lot coverage. The uh, property proposed for development has been amended. They have gone through the development review committee process for a first iteration of review. And per DOT requirements or DOT requests, they have amended their site plan from three entries to two. They have connected the site plan for both buildings with a driveway that's internal to allow for truck traffic and vehicle traffic to come off of Bright Star Road and be internal to the property. That should alleviate some of the traffic issues. The site itself is uh, sandwiched between the active quarry in the city limits of Douglasville and then the city on the other side, which is already um, constructing out this is a little bit older photo. These Several of these buildings have already been completed on Wood Road, um, and they're asking to develop something similar on the west side of Bright Star, just north of the Bright Star connector. Uh, city has approved major development on the south side of the Bright Star connector, several office buildings, and a large uh, warehouse project. They're working through the development plans for that. The site itself, as you can see from the county zoning, originally some months back, they came to us and um, presented a project that was a bit larger, incorporating all of the properties here on the left. Uh, we asked the city to de-annex a 17-acre property. They refused. And so the applicant is now coming back for the three northern properties. The reason that this particular property cannot be annexed into the city is that it would create an unlawful island of county zoning orphaned from the county and completely surrounded by city, which is why they're seeking the industrial classification in the county and allowing warehouses in the county rather than in the city. Um, again, 
as you can see, the surrounding zoning in the city is heavy industrial to the west, light industrial to the east, general commercial to the south, as well as general commercial to the east. And some photos of Bright Star Connector here on the left, looking into the very south edge of the property, where the stop signs are is Bright Star itself. And then here on the right is a photo looking northerly along Bright Star from the connector at the proposed site. It would be improved. Then here's some other photos looking at the proposed site on your right here on the left, on this left-hand photo. Uh, again, here are the residential structures and the development that exists currently on the property. This would be removed, obviously, for the placement of the warehouses themselves. And then here's a couple of shots of the site as you look north along Bright Star, and then on the opposite side of the road is the city zoned property where they have completed one of the warehouse projects and it's occupied right now. Um, this is that project across the street similar in size to what is proposed. The applicant has submitted materials that meet the zoning criteria and staff is recommending approval. They meet the special use permit criteria and staff is recommending approval of the special use as well. Um, staff recommends approval of the requested uh, rezoning from RLD to LI with the following findings that the rezoning will not modify the intent, purpose, or spirit of the Douglas County Unified Development Code, that the proposed zoning is consistent with the comprehensive future land use plan categorization of this property as within the workplace center area, incorporating mixed industrial general and heavy commercial uses. The uses permissible in the proposed zoning district are generally compatible with surrounding properties. Granting of the rezoning will not adversely affect the public health, safety, or welfare and the character of this area is still transitioning towards a more industrial mix of uses. Staff is recommending of the uh, approval of the rezoning with one condition, and that is that the applicant shall submit to the Development Review Committee, DRC, for review and consideration the site-specific site development and access management plans to address some of the development standards in the UDC and the concerns and requirements expressed in the specific agency impact statements reviewed in the staff report dated November 30th, 2021. And this is two cases, so we'll hear the rezoning and you can hear the cases concurrently, but we would be voting on the zoning first and then the special use permit second. Staff is also recommending approval of the special use permit to allow for a maximum lot coverage of 50% in lieu of the 25% maximum with again, one condition that they come back to the submit to the development review committee for review and consideration, the site specific development and access management plans to address the development standards in the UDC and the concerns and requirements expressed in the specific agency impact statements reviewed in the staff report dated November 30th, 2021. And then there's one last directive to staff to make an annual inspection and report back if the applicant has not in fact developed the property according to the code or com in compliance with the conditions of approval. And I believe the applicant has a representative available and I'm available for questions if you should have any, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Schaefer. Uh, I believe uh, Mr. Fowler and Mr. Sitzer are representing this. Uh, if you would unmute your system, state your name and address for the record, present any information you would like for the Planning and Zoning Board and Board of Commissioners to hear, you will have a total of 15 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening, everyone. Joe Fowler, Post Office Box 49 in Douglasville. And joining us on the call are Mr. Sitzer, as has just been mentioned, plus two engineers that had been working with the project, Lauren Lair and Ashley Pilcher. They are with Everly and Associates. It's been an engineering intensive project for some time because of the initial project, as was mentioned by Mr. Schaefer a moment ago, and then adjusting the total project as originally conceived to what you have before you. The two buildings, the largest of the two to the west, or actually it's to the south, the one that's 220,000 square feet is about two thirds of the size of the one that's directly across the street. The one just to the north of the one across the street is now over 400,000 square feet, I believe. 
And then Mr. Schaefer, if you could pull up the aerial that showed all the property, including the land south of Bright Star Connector, the parcel that you mentioned that's just east of Bright Star Road, where the little pond is located, that has now also been zoned light industrial with office uses across the front. And then just to the north of that, to the east of the two industrial buildings, there's a 500,000 square foot building underway there. The point of all of that, and I mention it because what is proposed here, though smaller than the buildings that are currently either under construction or in the planning stages as these buildings are significantly smaller, though in and of themselves not small. The question is what to do with this property. And I've known the property owners for quite a long time, both the Woods family as well as Mrs. Buchanan. The Woods to the north, Mrs. Buchanan to the south. At some point, the family members realized that it was not going to stay a residentially appropriate location. And so Ms. Buck, Ms. Buchanan, who's now in her 90s actually, has moved off the property and is living in an assisted living center up north of the Atlanta area. But the Woods moved to Florida, recognizing that this property would at some point be used for a different type of use. They decided to put it on the market for commercial and nothing happened for a very long time. And then after the the whole neighborhood began to change as has now been approved by the city of Douglasville. They recognized that perhaps an industrial use would be appropriate. That was primarily because they began to get a lot of phone calls about that. And at some point along the way, they were contacted by Mr. Sitzer's firm. And initially, all the parcels you see there just north of the residential area were put under contract. There was the proposal for the annexation, but it could not work out for the reason as explained. And so now that property to the south of that horizontal red line that is in the city and just to the west of there remains a buffer from the residential property to the south. That is not under contract and it's not involving our project. This has been a somewhat tough site because it's of course bounded on the west by the rock quarry, which means there's probably rock underneath it. But in addition to that, there are some streams. I will speak briefly about what's going on from an environmental standpoint. The developer has retained consultants to deal with the stream buffer issues. They have already obtained the individual permit for wetlands mitigation that has been obtained already. The various stream buffer requests have been made to the state. And it looks as though, based on comments we've now received, that those will be obtained in short order. What we have tonight, of course, is the special use permit that would allow the variance to go up to the 50%. It's a tough site because of the rock, and we believe that it's appropriate for this particular use. In order to address something about the environmental conditions, buildings have been reduced in size and moved around. And in addition to that, We've received a lot of comments back from the DOT with respect to access points. There were initially three, they've now been reduced to two. The latest iteration of the project was recently submitted to the DOT, very recently. In fact, I think, Phil, you now have it there and that's acceptable with the client. I will note also, by the way, you can ask Andy on behalf of the developer in a moment, but the conditions that are listed on both of the staff recommendations are acceptable to the client. Given the nature of the neighborhood, the transitional uses that, the way the properties have transitioned and the current uses of the area, we believe that this is a suitable use, particularly given the fact that it was on the market for a couple of years as commercial with no one having any interest whatsoever. That's our brief presentation. Uh, Mr. Sitzer, if you would give your address, please identify yourself in your address and then indicate if the conditions that have been recommended by the staff are acceptable to you. Uh, yes, good evening. Uh, Andy Sitzer, address is 1717 McKinney Avenue, Suite 1900 in Dallas, Texas, 75205. I'm sorry, 75202. Uh, and the conditions, Joe, are acceptable for both uh, the rezoning and the special use. 
Thank you, Andy. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the two engineers that have been working with the DOT, as well as with the environmental agencies are both online. That is Ms. Layer and Ms. Pilcher. If there are questions for them, they'll be available to respond to those questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the boards. Thank you very much, Mr. Fowler. And thank you, Mr. Setzer, for agreeing to the conditions that have been read into the record. <clears throat> At this point in time, I will open the public hearing on this matter. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this application, please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record, make any comments you would like. You have three minutes per person for a total allocated time of 30 minutes. Go ahead. Hearing or seeing none, I will close the public hearing in favor of and open the public hearing in opposition. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application, please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record. You would have three minutes per person for a total allocated of 30 minutes. Go ahead. Hearing or seeing none, I will close the public hearing on this matter. Planning and Zoning Board, do you have any questions of the applicant or of Mr. Schaefer? Hearing this is Rob question? Thomas. Oh, go ahead. I have a quick question, just um, probably to the developer. Um, how long do you think this project will take? Um, you know, once we get all our entitlements in place, um, <clears throat> which will include the state uh, stream approvals, uh, we will fully design the, both buildings. So my thought is sometime mid-summer of 22, we'd start. And based on supply chain issues today, it would pro project it would probably take a year to complete. Okay, thank you. Any more questions from Planning and Zoning Board? Mr. Chairman, this is Teresa Knowles. I have a question for the developer, please. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Setzer? Yes, ma'am. Um, are these considered spec buildings or do you already have a tenant, tenant for them? They are considered spec buildings. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from Planning and Zoning Board? Hearing none, Madam Chairman, I'll throw the floor to the to you for questions from planning, questions from the Board of Commissioners. All right, thank you so much, uh, Chairman Simmons. Board of Commissioners, at this time, do you have any questions for the applicant or either Mr. Schaefer? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Commissioner McGuider. Trouble with my buttons this tonight. I've just got a few questions. How many bays do the uh, each building have? I forgot what they said. How many bays? Uh, you're talking uh, width or depth? So typically what with the way we design these is <clears throat> across the dock. So going, call it left or right across building two, we typically design somewhere between 52 or a 54 foot wide bay. And, and I don't have the specs in front of me. Lauren, I don't know if you remember those off the top of your head. Um, and then the depth, uh, ma'am, we typically will go <clears throat> with uh, the first bay off the dock will be 60 feet, and then we go with a even number. So whether that number is 50 or 48 and a half, whatever it is. But so how many loading docks will you have? Uh, I mean, overhead doors. Yeah, we haven't gotten that depth, excuse me, that deep in the design. Um, but typically, we're probably looking at about one per 4,000 feet. Okay, I was, I was thinking uh, Mr. Schaefer mentioned a number of bays, but I can't, uh, I may have misunderstood him. Mr. Schaefer, do you, did you say anything about the number of bays? No, not on, not on this project. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. Uh, another question. Um, 
do y'all own the property that's going to be used as a buffer between the residential? No, we do not. We we dropped the uh, <clears throat> the contract on that once the city uh, decided they wouldn't re-annex it. Okay, and is that property on Wood Road? Does it front uh, or connect it, to Wood Road? It fronts uh, Bright Star. It's on the west side of Bright Star, so just south of Building One. There you go. It's those two pieces. Uh, okay, so, but is it that Wood Road? That's not Wood Road. No, Wood Wood Road's up above. Okay, I'm sorry. It's so little I can't really sorry. see. <laughs> now that what you're seeing on there, ma'am, is a uh, is actually an easement. It's a either a gas or oil line. Oh, yeah, know. it's plantation pipeline, I think. Yeah. 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 Okay. Natural yeah. gas, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the truck traffic uh, from these buildings, will both, both exits and entrances be used or just one of them or what? Uh, I believe both will be used. I think the, uh, the natural flow for building two may be to exit the entrance across from the connector road, Bright Star connector. But I, yes, both buildings, are, or excuse me, both driveways are designed so truck traffic can, can utilize those. All right, um, on the side of the buildings that be facing Bright Star, is there any special facade on or half brick or something halfway up or is it just all metal? Uh, no, these will be uh, concrete tilt panel that are painted. And then typically on the corner features, we do some type of an accent feature, whether it's a form liner in the concrete with, you know, different the, shades of yeah. the colors. It's, it's nothing crazy. It's, a, I would say, pretty conservative color selection right. that we use. And will you have any kind of a tree line uh, between that and Bright Star? Uh, we'll have whatever the county requirement is for landscaping. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Bill, uh, what do y'all require? <laughs> yeah, there's there's a setback, Commissioner Guider. There'll be a setback, and there'll be landscaping requirements, curb gutter, um, traffic. I mean, not traffic lights, but uh, overhead lights. So that they'll have a, a frontage that will be um, landscaped. Okay. It'll go All through right. DRC. And one question to you: uh, You also said that there'd be an annual inspection by staff. Uh, is that going to be a permanent thing annually just, or every yeah, five no, years? Just at the annual, just at the first anniversary, we'll uh -huh. go out as we have in the uh, for the last couple of years and make sure that the conditions were met and that they're uh, developing according to the code. And if everything's fine, um, this will be a permanent special use permanent. If there's some problem, we would bring a problem back to you. Okay. All right. With that, I yield back. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. Uh, any other comments or remarks? Sure. Uh -huh. Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, Madam Chair. And um, you know, um, uh, I, I recognize home rule, but I'm watching how the county is shifting its density, its mobility, and into District 4, I, I get it. So here's my question. Maybe Director Valentin can help, because I think Madam Guider I think this is important for staff, even though some things are speculative, I think we still need to understand the impact of truck volume, especially up against residential, All right? So I heard something about 4,000 square feet per uh, whatever that was. And so if there's 300,000 square feet, it's a long day, guys. Somebody do the math for me, give us, uh, I know that's maybe linear, give us an estimate of the number of truck traffic, how much volume is this? That's, that, that's still material. You're up against residents. And so what is, what is that volume? Um, Director Valentin, Bill, can y'all just, based on the dimensions, do the best you can. I'm not holding you to it. I just, I just want to know the order of magnitude along with um, Madam Guider, please. Uh, yes, Commissioner. Uh, the, the exact number or, or closer to being um, uh, exact on, on the number, it depends on, on the parking base and the overhead doors or uh, bay doors that they have. So those details haven't <coughs> been um, finalized yet. We will be looking at that uh, as part of the DRC review. Uh, however, 
based on on the square footage, uh, you know, potentially there could be a significant number of, of trucks uh, utilizing the site. Uh, uh, there's been no uh, definition as to exactly what hours of operation or what type of uh, operation and um, those details. Um, so I don't have a, a good handle on the number, uh, but, but based on the size of the facilities, I venture to say that there, there's gonna be an impact. And of course the, the area has been um, zoned uh, in the city particularly uh, and, and the road network uh, for that type of use uh, but uh, as, as it develops more and more dense, then the impact is going to be felt all around. Uh, there's been some discussion about uh, whether some of the traffic would be encouraged to go up to uh, Veterans Memorial as opposed to accessing um, to the south to Highway 5. However, being where the site is uh, sited directly across the uh, Bright Star Connector, that would seem to me to be a logical uh, entry point and access point for, for this site. But th there is gonna be certainly additional truck traffic that is gonna uh, compound uh, the, uh, uh, the issues that we're uh, seeing there today. Yeah. No, I, I, and again, I get it. I still, since it's the last meeting, you can't let this go. You gave us the number, this is like algebra. Right, so you gave me, you know, you want to calculate uh, the area of something, right? So if you know the linear footage across, I heard him say a number of, well, based on the bay, how we do it, the depth and width, okay, that's 4,000, okay. You, you, can, you can back into it, divide that forward to 300 or whatever that, that across the dimension. I'm just looking for an estimate. Is that 80? Is it 75? Um, because again, one more time we said it's going to be dense, but uh, again, so I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to ask the applicant, maybe they know, or somebody can give us some order of magnitude. It doesn't bind you in the moment, but we're just curious. It's like, gosh, I know the volume. I'm about to drop on you over here in this area. Are you, are you looking for door count, sir? Yeah. Yeah. So if you look at building 200, if you do the math of uh, one poor 4,000 square feet, that's about 30 doors. But if you look at the northwest corner, you'll see the truck dock. Uh, excuse me, the truck, truck apron is actually in off the corner. And that's, I, Lauren, I assume that's because of grades that we had to <clears throat> push that uh, truck apron in. So, but if you just do the math, it's about 30 and I'm building one and the math comes out to about 55. All right, there we go. That's all I was looking for. So Madam Guy, 30, 55, give or take. Um, they'll, they'll come back later with the volume, whether it's 24, seven or some hours of operation. But I just wanted to know, because um, I live this now. I think that was an important question to answer. So, all right, Madam Chair, that's all I want to know. I yield. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman. Uh -huh. Commissioner Geider, you have the floor. Mm -hmm. I can add a little something to this. Uh, the big complex across the road, mm -hmm. they have got another exit onto the uh, connector. Uh, so a lot of the traffic that was normally going down Bright Star is going to be directed either straight to Highway 5 or the connector. They're in the process of uh, cutting that road now because they keep building more and more warehouses out there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the extension of Wood Road, correct, Commissioner Guider? Yeah, well, I don't know if it's the extension. It, it's, it's from the big truck bays and everything out there where Anderson Windows is or okay. Silver line, no uh, line is. And they've cut about the midway or let's say a third of the way down the connector from Bright Star, they've cut a new road. Okay. Okie dokie. Okay. So a lot of the traffic is going to be... Um, you know, sent that way rather than on Bright Star Road. And I think they're also putting the entry on to uh, Highway 5. So um, anyway, <laughs> lots and lots of traffic, but I just wanted to kind of share that information. Thank you. I yield back. Right. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Veteran, sounds like that additional road would be a, a, 
a conduit for relief, uh, pressure relief. Um, I just have one question for you that for the applicant in terms of the truck sizes, are they just the big 18 wheelers? Or is that what we're looking at or? That's that's typically the size of what most warehouses use. And yeah. you know, if they're using a e-commerce today, there are some firms that you use smaller trucks, but most most are big. I think that picture right there, those are probably all <clears throat> full size. Uh, okay. Although the ones on the end look like they're smaller, but yeah, uh, those are boxes. Box yeah. Trucks. Yeah. yeah, they look like just little small box trucks. So the, are those the ones, the box trucks, that to me sends a good message is the traffic won't be as congested. I see you smiling, Bill. Is that true? Or? Well, you know, it, it will be uh, tractor trailer in, box truck out, oh. or box <laughs> truck in, box truck out. So. <coughs> Trucks are okay. truck. All right. Well, you answered my question. Thank you so much, Bill, and also. Um, Mr. Size Setzer. Is it Size Setzer or Sitzer? Sitzer. Thank Sitzer. you. I was right. Thank you, Mr. Sitzer. All right. If there are no other questions from the board, I'll yield back to you, uh, Chairman Simmons. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Planning and Zoning Board, you have heard the presentations and the questions that have been asked and the responses. Uh, do I have a motion on Z 2021 68? Chairman Simmons, it's Rob Thomas. I'd like to make a motion to approve application Z 2021-68, a request for rezoning from residential low density to light industrial for warehouse with the following, with the uh, findings that was read into record by staff. And the condition. Uh, the condition, the applicant shall submit well, yeah, also the conditions went into, into by staff that shall submit to the development review committee for review and consideration the specific site development and access management plans to address the development standards in the UDC and the concerns and requirements expressed in a specific agency impact statement reviewed in the staff report dated November 30th, 2021. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Thomas. I have a uh, motion, planning is only board. Do I have a second? This is Frank Payne, I second. Thank you, Mr. Payne. I have a motion and a second. Planning and zoning board, do we have any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll call for a vote on the motion. Uh, everyone wishing to uh, vote in favor, respond with a yay. If you're not in favor, uh, the opposite, a nay. Mr. Thomas? Yay. Ms. Knowles? Yay. Mr. Penniman? Yay. Mr. Curry? Yay. Mr. Payne? Yay. Mr. Nicholson? Mr. Nicholson? Okay, uh, he's, uh, either he has dropped out or he's having trouble uh, activating his microphone. Uh, in any case, we uh, the motion would be approved. Uh, Madam Chairman, I will throw it over to the Board of Commissioners with a motion to approve Z2021-68, uh, rezoning from RLD, residential low density, to LI light industrial for warehouses uh, on uh, Bright Star Road. Thank you so much, Chairman Simmons. Board of Commissioners, you've heard all the questions and answers. Do we have a motion? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I make a motion to approve application Z2021-68 as passed by the Planning and Zoning Board with the stated findings and the one condition. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second in the discussion board. We have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District one. District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 4 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. I yield back to you, Chairman Simmons. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Planning and Zoning Board. I would now ask for a motion 
on the special use permit S 2021-75. Do I have a motion? Chairman Simmons, it's Rob Thompson. I'd like to make a motion. Okay. I made a motion to approve application 2021-75, a request for special use approval to allow lot coverage up to 50% maximum in a Dog River secondary basin with the following conditions presented by staff. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second, Frank Payne. Thank you, Mr. Payne. I have a motion and a second. Do I have any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I will call for a vote. I'll wish you to vote in favor of S2021-75 for approval and respond with a yay. Otherwise, respond with a nay. Uh, Kirk Nicholson? Still off the air. Frank Payne? Yay. Mr. Curry? Yay. Mr. Penniman? Yay. Ms. Knowles? Yay. Mr. Thomas? Yay. Thank you very much. We have approval of a motion for S2021-75, a request for special use approval to allow lot coverage up to 50% maximum. Madam Chairman, I will throw it over the Board of Commissioners with a recommendation for approval. Thank you so much, uh, Chairman Simmons. Board of Commissioners, you've heard all the questions and answers regarding the special use permission, permit. Do we have a motion? Yes, ma'am. I make a motion to approve application S2021-75 uh, with stated condition as passed by Planning and Zoning. Second. Okay. okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion, Board? We have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 4? Yes. Chairman, yes, we have a four unanimous vote in the motion carry. I yield back to you, Chairman Simmons. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman, Board of Commissioners. Uh, Mr. Sitzer, Mr. Fowler, wish you best going forward with this project. Thank you all very much. I'll see you on application you. number seven. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Mr. Roberts, we've had a request to move uh, application uh, Z2021-75 to next on the list. Is that acceptable? And would you introduce the next item? Absolutely. So that um, Z2021-76 Vasily and Olga Papazogela at 10990 Veterans Memorial Highway, Douglasville, Georgia, 30122, land lots 361, 362, District 18, Section 2, and Parcel 2. The current zoning is, is CH. Um, the requested special use permit amendment on 3.6 acres is in commission district number one and the proposed uses to uh, amendment to allow for the sale of landscaping materials and supplies. Recommendation from staff chairman is for approval for this. This is Phil Schaefer's case. Thank you very much. Mr. Schaefer, would you uh, present the uh, staff findings and recommendations for us, please? Yes, Mr. Chairman. So uh, this case comes back to us as a result of uh, doing good business, actually. Um, the Popozogolos had started their landscape business. They complied with all the conditions of approval as established in their original authorization in 2019. The only problem was I had inserted a condition of approval into the special use permit uh, requirements as follows. All vehicles or equipment parked on site shall be in good working condition and in no instance can any item or vehicle stored on site be advertised for sale either directly or indirectly. Although the sale of merchandise and materials is a use by right in the zone district, I had inadvertently put item into this condition and so we felt that it would be best to come back and remove that, let that word from the approval so that it was very clear landscaping materials can be sold on the property. Um, and, and that would have been a use by right anyway, but at least this takes the, uh, the obvious problem in having someone conditioned not to be able to do something that is a normal use by right in the zone district. 
So, you know, it's a tiny change. It, uh, they've complied with all of their requirements over the last couple of years in terms of adding the fencing, adding landscaping along the front. They've added a building in the back for their shop um, and they've complied with everything. And they just would like to be able to address the issue of selling landscaping materials. Um, the view of the property, uh, looking west along Highway 78, and here's a view into the property. Yeah, since this picture was taken, there is landscaping at the front that has been added. It does meet all the requirements. Staff apologizes for the problem with uh, inadvertent consequences. The staff recommends approval with the following findings and condition. The use will not substantially modify the land use plan or the intent, purpose, or spirit of the Douglas County Unified Development Code. The use will not negatively impact surrounding properties. The granting of the special use permit will not adversely affect the public health, safety, or welfare. And then the conditions of approval are the same as before, but we have modified condition two to allow for that amendment. So condition one, all requirements of the Unified Development Code to include fencing and landscaping, screening around stored vehicles and equipment shall be met with appropriate setback distances from property lines. It currently is. All vehicles or equipment parked on the site shall be in good working condition and in no instance can any vehicle stored on site be advertised for sale directly or indirectly. And any other use of the property not identified within section 210 uses allowed in each zone district, specifically tables 2.2 and 2.3 uses allowed by right and accessory uses allowed by right of the Douglas County Unified Development Code may require the submission review and approval of a new special use permit. And then we would attach here the directive from you to staff to inspect on the anniversary to verify that all conditions have been met. And with that, I yield back to you, Mr. Chairman, if you have any questions. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Schaefer. At this point in time, will the applicant or the applicant's representative please unmute yourself, state your name and address for the record, present any information you would like Planning and Zoning Board and the Board of Commissioners to hear. You would have 15 minutes total. To Chairman Joe Fowler, again, thank you for moving this up on the agenda. I'm grateful. As are my clients, the public Gazalos who are on the line with us. I don't see their images, but they're on the line with us along with their son. If you look back at the plat that was prepared by Bart Sims, Phil had it up a moment ago, you'll see the proposed location for the transactions. In fact, the, the wording that Phil is highlighting is proposed materials bin. These folks work very hard in the landscaping business. What they have done is to comply with all the county regulations. And it occurred to them that their business could do better if they sold landscaping materials, mulch, some plants, things of that nature. They can explain it in more detail if you like. They came to me, I talked to Phil, we realized the issue. We're now before you to simply have that removed so they can expand their business and be successful when the time that people who need to work hard are doing so. That's it. The public is always around the line if you'd like to hear from either one of them. Their son, I, I think, may also be on the phone. Uh, he speaks great English. Mrs. Public Gazala speaks very good English. Vasily, not so good. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Fowler. Uh, we will remember that. Uh, at this point in time, I will open the public hearing on this matter. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this application, please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record. You would have three minutes per person for a total allocated time of 30 minutes. Uh, anyone wishing to speak, go ahead. Hearing and seeing none, I will now open the public hearing in favor and the opposition. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application, please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record. You would have three minutes per person for a total allocated time of 30 minutes. Go ahead. Hearing or seeing none, I will close the public hearing on this matter at this time. Planning and Zoning Board, do you have any questions to the for the applicant or the applicant's representative? Mr. Chairman, I have a question for Mr. Schaefer. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Schaefer, the agenda that we were provided called this a rezoning request. 
However, we're now discussing a special permit. It's an amendment to a condition of approval. Rezonings and special use permits are all classified as rezonings under state statute. And so it is a rezoning action. We're just being asked to modify, amend previously approved conditions of approval. It's been, so, given, a, it's been given a new number and a new uh, title, but it is really amending those old conditions of approval. So the appropriate number is S2021-76? That's correct. Okay, the, if you. you'll notice, LIT acquisitions was granted S2021-75. And so it conflicted with this one as S2021, as Z2021-75. And so it was felt that we would allow the LIT acquisitions to continue carrying the S2175 designation and this one would become 76. Apologies for the confusion. Okay, thank you, appreciate it. So we're talking about S2021-76, right Phil? That's, that's correct, that's correct. Okay, thank you very much. Any more questions or comments from Planning and Zoning Board? Hearing none, Madam Chairman, I will yield the floor to you for questions from Board of Commissioners. Thank you so much, Chairman Simmons. Board of Commissioners, do we have any questions at this time for the applicant or either Mr. Shaker? I don't have any, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Okay, being no questions, uh, I yield back to you, Chairman Simmons. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Mm -hmm. Planning and Zoning Board, you have heard the comments, you have heard the questions and answers. Could I have a motion from Planning and Zoning Board? This is Brandon Penniman. I make a motion to approve application S2021-76 with all findings, conditions, and directives as read in by staff. Thank you very much, Mr. Penniman. Do I have a second? Sir Nicholson, second. Thank you, Mr. Nicholson. Glad to have you back. I have a motion and a second. Planning and Zoning Board, do we have any discussion? Uh, this is uh, Curtis Sappenfield. We own the property uh, next door, and uh, um, we just sir, we were invited to. And sir, the, we have uh, already closed the public hearing on this uh, matter. I'm sorry. Okay. And now this is planning and zoning board discussion only, please. I'm sorry, we missed the part. About planning and zoning board, do we have any uh, discussion? If not, I will call for a vote on the approval of S2021-76. Everyone wishing to vote in favor, please respond with a yay. If you're not in favor, a nay. Uh, Mr. Thomas. Yay. Ms. Knowles. Yay. Mr. Pinneman. Mr. Pinneman. Mr. Yay. Excuse me, my phone was taking forever. <laughs> okay. Miss, Mr. Curry. Yay. Mr. Payne. Yay. Mr. Nicholson. Yay. Thank you very much, Planning and Zoning Board. Madam Chairman, I will throw it over to the Board of Commissioners with a unanimous approval for S2021-76, a request for rezoning from CH. Oh, that. Thank you so much, Chairman Simmons, Board of Commissioners. Well, request to modify approved conditions previously uh, authorized for special use permit. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. Board of Commissioners, you've heard all the questions and answers. Do we have a motion to approve? Yes, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve item number S2021-76 with the said findings and conditions as stated by Planning and Zoning. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion, board? We have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District four? Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a four unanimous vote and the motion carries. I yield back to you, Chairman Simmons. Thank you very much, Mr. Fowler and your class. We wish you the best with this. Go, going forward. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and others. God bless you all. Bye -bye. Uh, Mr. Roberts, would you introduce the next agenda item, please? Yes, sir, I will. Z2021-69 and S2021-76. 
2021-70. The applicant is Fernando Funes and the property owner is Damaris uh, G. Kirk Estate. The location is Highway 78 at Bowden Street within Landlot 316, District 18, Section 2, Parcel 24. Current zoning is General Commercial, CG. The uh, associated special use permit is for, to allow the automotive servicing and repairs in the OHC Highway Corridor Overlay District on po 0.41 acres. This is Commission District Number 1. Proposed use is automotive servicing and repairs. No tire sales or installation. Staff recommendation is for approval with the conditions. This is also Phil Schaefer's case this evening. Thank you very much, Mr. Schaefer. Would yes. you uh, present the staff findings and recommendations for us, please? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the property comes to us this evening uh, a second time, though we did not see it before. An original applicant had come to us to rezone this for purposes of establishing a lawful automotive repair business. It is in a CG district right now, and the only district in which you can do automotive repairs is CH, uh, heavy commercial. In addition, there are car sales that have been going on on the property over the years, either car sales or auto repairs, um, neither of which would be allowed in the CG district, the general commercial district, but both of which would be allowed in the CH district. So the applicant is asking that the property be rezoned so it can be lawfully reestablished as an automotive repair site and uh, in given the special use permit because it is within the highway corridor. And I'll show you the table in a moment. The property is developed. It has uh, parking in the back, parking in the front and on the sides, access along Bowden Street, access from Highway 78. Um, along Bankhead, there's driveways coming in. As I said, uh, uh, it has been there for many, many years. It has been an automobile repair, automobile repair shop. It has been a car sales lot, and it has gone back and forth over the years between those two operations. Uh, as you can see from the site, these cars are all gone. The site is clean right now. The applicant is simply asking for us to approve the rezoning and then the special use permit to allow for car repairs. As I mentioned, the table of uses in the Unified Development Code under automotive repair and maintenance, it allows uh, automotive repair as use by right. If you look down the column of CH, it's a use by right for everything except the automotive body paint and interior repair and maintenance, which is a special use. If you come over here to the OHC column, you can see that all of the auto repair type businesses our special use permits. And so that is the reason this evening that we're being asked to approve both the rezoning and the special use permit. The property, the zoning criteria have all been met. It is a, an existing facility for many years that was used this way. The special use permit criteria are also met and staff is recommending approval of both the rezoning and the special use. Staff is recommending approval of the requested rezoning from CG to CH with the following findings, that the rezoning will not modify the intent, purpose, or spirit of the Douglas County Unified Development Code, and that the proposed zoning is consistent with the comprehensive future land use plan categorization of this property as within the mixed use corridor area, incorporating mixed commercial, residential, and industrial uses, that the uses permissible in the proposed heavy commercial zoning district are generally compatible with the surrounding commercial properties. The granting of the rezoning will not adversely affect the public health, safety, or welfare. And that the character of this area has been evolving towards heavier commercial corridor with pockets of a more industrial nature as we go along Highway 78. The, the findings for the special use permit, similar, that the use will not modify the land use plan or the intent, purpose, or spirit of the Douglas County Unified Development Code, that the proposed use is also consistent with the comprehensive future land use plan categorization of the area as mixed use corridor, incorporating mixed commercial, residential, and industrial uses, and that the granting of the special use will not adversely affect public health, safety, or welfare. I have asked for a number of conditions on the special use permit, which I'll read. Uh, condition one, that additional site improvements for paved parking or driveways and for construction of accessory facilities 
will require review and authorization prior to installation by the Development Review Committee. Number two, that any other use of the property not identified within Section 210, uses allowed in each zoning district, specifically Tables 2.2, principal uses by right, and 2.3 accessory uses by right of the Douglas County Unified Development Code may require the submission, review, and approval of a new special use permit. And that three, parking areas in the rear or side yards for vehicles awaiting or having just completed repairs and servicing must be contained within a secured opaque fenced area on the property and no on-street parking along or in the public right-of-way shall be permitted. Number four, that the applicant will coordinate with the Georgia DOT for any modifications to the property frontages that include driveway access points along Highway 78 and that DC DOT, Douglas County DOT, would be coordinated with for any alterations along Bowden Street. Five, the site shall be developed in such a manner as to maintain a safe vehicle-free area over the septic tank and field lines serving the premises. I'll explain that in a minute and no vehicle dismantling or scrap parts recovery activity shall be permitted and no inoperable junk vehicles shall be stored on the property at any time. And again, again, we have the directive to staff for the special use permit to go out at the annual anniversary and just verify that it is in compliance with the conditions of approval and the unified development code and report back to you if it is not compliant. Again, I will now explain just a minute here on the septic tank issue the health department has asked the applicant to verify the location. The property is served by a septic tank and field line. And the way the parking is currently, we don't know exactly where that septic field is. And so in terms of reviewing what can be done in the rear yard, we just wanna verify where that septic tank and field line run so that we can protect it from parking over it and compaction. Um, that was the reasoning for that. And with that, I will be turning it over to you Mr. Chairman, I believe that the applicant's representative is also on the line and available for questions. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Schaefer. Will the applicant or the applicant's representative please unmute yourself, state your name and address for the record, and present any information you would like for Planning and Zoning Board and the Board of Commissioners to hear. You will have a total of 15 minutes. Go ahead. Hello, uh, it's Chad Min, and I'm the real estate broker uh, here with the applicant, Fernando Funes. My address, 4216 Laurel Creek Court, Smyrna, 30080. Um, we're here to answer any questions. One thing that I will update, uh, the septic system, we had it looked at, we had it located, uh, tested, and we submitted all that information to the health department. It's it's located adjacent to the building in the rear left area. And the applicant is planning to not drive over it as the condition required. Uh, the applicant is also willing to install the fence as required. And uh, any questions you have for us, we'll be happy to answer. Okay, thank you very much. I just need the applicant to confirm that, the, uh, that the, he is in agreement to the six conditions that Mr. Schaefer read into the uh, record. Yeah, and so by the way, there's a language barrier and we have one of his colleagues here, but they, wanna, they want to know that you accept all six conditions. And he's saying yes. That was an affirmative? Affirmative, yes. Okay. Thank you, very, thank you very much. If you would just stand by, uh, I will now open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this application, please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record, make any comments you would like to have. You would have three minutes per person for a total allocated of 30 minutes. Go ahead. Hearing and seeing none, I will open the public hearing for anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application. Again, unmute your system, state your name and address for the record. Each person would have three minutes for a total allocated of 30 minutes. Go ahead. Hearing none, seeing no activity, I will close the public hearing on this matter. 
uh, Planning and Zoning Board, do you have any questions of the applicant's representative or Mr. Schaefer? Hearing none from Planning and Zoning Board, Madam Chair, I will yield the floor to you for questions from the boards of commissioners. Thank you so much, Jimmy Simmons. Board of Commissioners, do we have any questions for the applicant or Mr. Schaefer at this time? Okay, being none, I um, give it back to you, uh, Chairman Simmons. Thank you very much. Planning and Zoning Board, I would ask for a motion on this matter. Uh, the zoning part, Z2021-69, We'll take that first. Do I have a motion? This is Frank Payne. Uh, I make a motion to approve application Z2021-69, a requ request for a rezoning for C-G, general uh, commercial, to C-H, heavy commercial, for an auto repair and body shop with the following findings and conditions that were outlined by staff. Thank you very much. That's it. Uh, 10 181 Veterans Memorial Highway, Lithia Springs, correct? Yes. Okay. I have a motion. Uh, do I have a second? A second. I have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion planning and zoning board? Hearing no discussion, I will call for a vote on this matter. All wishing to vote in favor of the uh, Z2021-69 uh, request for rezoning from general commercial to heavy commercial. Uh, please answer in the affirmative if you're in, not in favor in the negative. Uh, Mr. Thomas. Yay. Ms. Knowles. Yay. Mr. Peniman. Yay. Mr. Curry. Yay. Mr. Payne. Yay. Mr. Nicholson. Yay. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. I will yield to the Board of Commissioners with a motion to approve Z2021-69 uh, unanimous. Thank you so much, Chairman Simmons. Board of Commissioners, you've heard the questions and, and answers. Do we have a motion? Yes, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve item, oh, excuse me, approve this request of rezoning of Z2021-69 from CG to CH with the following findings uh, as stated by planning and zoning and all conditions. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion board? We have a motion and a second. I'm gonna call you district, please respond accordingly. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District four? Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a four unanimous vote in the motion carry. I yield back to you, Chairman Simmons. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Planning and Zoning Board, after the approval of the rezoning, do I have a motion as far as a special use permit is concerned? That would be S2021-70. This is Frank Payne again. I make a motion to approve application S2021-70, a request for a special use approval for an auto repair and body shop in the highway corridor outlay district with the following findings as presented by uh, findings and conditions presented by staff. Thank you, uh, Mr. Payne. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion. That was Mr. Thomas. Yay. Uh, a motion and a second. Do I have any discussion planning and zoning board? Hearing no discussion, I will call for the question. All wishing to vote in favor of the special use permit 2021-70, please answer in the affirmative or the negative. Uh, Mr. Thomas. Yay. Ms. Knowles. Yay. Mr. Peniman. Yay. Mr. Curry. Yay. Mr. Payne. Yay. Mr. Nicholson. Yay. Thank you very much, Planning and Zoning Board. Madam Chairman, I will yield the floor to the Boards of Commissioners with a, a unanimous approval for S2021-70. Thank you. Board of Commissioners, you've heard all the questions and answers regarding the special use permit. Do we have a motion? Yes, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve item numbers S2021-70. Uh, 
as recommended with a special land use permit as recommended uh, conditions and findings by staff. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion for it? We have a motion and a second. We're gonna call you district, please respond accordingly. District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman, yes, we have a four unanimous vote in the motion carry. You're back to you, Chairman Simmons. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman, Board of Commissioners. Mm -hmm. uh, we wish you all the best going forward on this on this matter. Uh, Thank you. Mr. Roberts, would you introduce the next agenda item, please? Chairman, next item is going to be Z2021-71 Johnson Development Associates Incorporated. Property owner Barry Haberman and Faye Paxton. The location is 745 Linda Lane, Lithia Springs, and landlot 706 and 773, District 18, Section 2, Parcel 10. Current uh, zoning is CG General Commercial. The request is to go from CG to LI Light Industrial on the 10.6 acres. This is Commission District Number 2. The proposed use is a 132,000 square foot warehouse. Staff's recommendation on this is approval with conditions. Chairman, this is Phil Schaefer's case. Thank you very much. Mr. Schaefer, would you uh, present the staff findings and recommendations for us, please? Yes, Mr. Chairman. So the subject property is located on the west side of Thornton and the north side of Factory Shoals at that intersection. It is also at the far east end of the very terminus of Linda Lane although I will explain no access to Linda Lane will be allowed. Property is currently forested, overgrown. It was rezoned to a commercial category some years back, and the request is to establish a 132,000 square foot warehouse. Apologies that the warehouse diagram you're looking at is a little um, tilted to the left. Factory Shoals is over here on your right, and Thornton Road is up on the top. So this should actually be turned 90 degrees to the right. But in order for you to see the entire picture clearly, we wanted to make it as big as possible. So this is why we turned it. The proposal will have a, a, a deceleration lane requirement um, coming into the property. The access point will have to be directly opposite the, uh, an existing driveway for the warehouse that is across factory shoals from this site. We had an applicant some months back come through and seek rezoning originally for this site, but their proposal did not cite their building as ad adequately as this one is cited. And so they were not able to make the project work. This applicant, however, has modified the site design so that the um, drive around the backside of the building does not have access into the building, but that the applicant is providing employee access to the building on the short sides and the loading spaces will front Thornton Road, which has a tremendous tree cover in between Thornton and the site itself that will remain because that's still part of the right of way. The, this assists a great deal in preventing the loading bays themselves from affecting the handful of remaining residential properties that are still up on Linda Lane, which you can see here. So the siting of the building being closer to the westerly property boundary, but facing all of the bays towards Thornton will help alleviate any impacts to these yellow colored residentially zoned properties, most of which have single family homes, either owner occupied, but for the most part, renter occupied. There are a number of owners who own several of these lots, and so these are mostly rentals. Um, the property is so currently zoned CG, so it is commercial. Uh, originally, it was envisioned that a gas station might go here. That never materialized, and in the meantime, over the years, the light industrial districts have expanded cons uh, considerably all around. And If you look at, of course, the parcel map showing what's been built, uh, you have all of the warehousing south of Factory Shoals that's been built out. We have property to their immediate west that is owned by a development company. You have property to their west that is owned by a data center that has not broken ground yet. And you have the very large 1 million square foot Prologis building on this area 
that's been cleared, they are now authorized for going forward with constructing that project. And we have a number of other projects that are requesting rezoning back here to the left of our view. The property, uh, if you look here on the, the left-hand photo is just uh, looking into the property from Factory Shoals on the south side of Factory Shoals, close to Thornton. This right-hand side though is a very good view of the westbound Factory Shoals lane that will have to have a deceleration lane added to it on the right. It already has a left turn lane into that large factory site that's been built already. And as I understand it, although the director of, of DOT can explain it a little better, there are some improvements that are slated for quick uh, turnaround at Factory Shoals and Thornton right now that will assist in some of the queuing issues that we're feeling by removing some of the islands um, that are in the road. If you look back here at the diagram, we learned on one of our DRI reviews, Depart Development of Regional Impact Reviews with the Atlanta Regional Commission, that there are islands on all four quadrants of this intersection that are slated to be removed and the striping slated to be improved. Um, you, you're welcome to ask the Director of, of Department of Transportation um, if you wish details on how that would improve, obviously, the, the turning movements and the through movements for factory shoals at Thornton, because that would have a positive effect on the traffic that might in, in fact come off of this proposed pro project. As far as looking back at the property, here we are looking at the existing driveway on the south side of factory shoals and the warehouse that is occupied currently. The proposal would require a new driveway on the north side of factory shoals opposite this so that the turn movements can be coordinated and safer. This is a picture on the right hand side looking easterly along factory shoals again just to see where the various entries and exits and how the topography works for the roadway. Uh, staff has reviewed the zoning criteria and realized that the project does meet all of the zoning criteria and staff is recommending approval of rezoning this from CG to light industrial LI with the following findings and a condition. The findings are that the A, the rezoning will not modify the intent, purpose, or spirit of the Douglas County Unified Development Code. B, the proposed zoning is consistent with the comprehensive future land use plan. Categorization of this property is within the commerce center area, incorporating industrial and heavy commercial uses. And C, the uses permissible in the proposed zoning district are generally compatible with surrounding properties. And D, the granting of the rezoning will not adversely affect the public health, safety, or welfare. The loan condition that we are asking for is that, number one, the applicant shall submit to the Development Review Committee, DRC, for review and consideration the specific site development and access management plans to address the development standards in the UDC and the concerns and requirements expressed in the specific agency impact statements reviewed in the staff report dated November 30th, 2021. With that, I will turn it back over to you, Mr. Chairman, and I believe that the applicant is available. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Schaefer. Will the applicant or the applicant's representative please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record, and present any information you would like for Planning and Zoning Board and Board of Commissioners to hear. You would have a total of 15 minutes. Go ahead. Yes, Mr. Chair, my name is Harold Buckley. I'm with Wilson Bragg and Irby, 2849 Paces Ferry Road in Atlanta, and I am here on behalf of Johnson Development Associates, which is the applicant who is proposing this development. Um, I would like to make a few brief points, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. I don't think it'll take much of your time because Mr. Schaefer has done a very thorough job presenting this uh, development proposal. The first thing I'd like to say is that we have reviewed the staff report and we do agree with the staff's analysis and also the staff's recommended condition. Uh, so we are happy to accept that condition. The second point that I would like to make is that Johnson Development has been very careful and very deliberate about being sensitive to the surrounding community and how this development fits within it. Uh, and we have done that in a couple of ways. The first thing we did was before we even prepared our application package, actually it was maybe a month or two before, 
we reached out to Mr. Schaefer and Mr. Roberts and asked if we could uh, arrange a virtual meeting just to show them our draft site plan and ask their thoughts on it and whether there were any issues that they could advise us of. Uh, and uh, Mr. Schaefer was able to say, we don't even need you know, to have a meeting because we've already summarized all the issues uh, that you're inquiring about. I can give you a copy of the staff report from the last application, which came through not that long ago. Uh, that allowed us to take a look at the staff's analysis in that report and to go back and actually revise and refine our site plan so that we were able to actually fit within all of the staff's recommended changes from the prior rezoning application. So that when we came back uh, for our formal pre-application conference, we were able to demonstrate that we did meet the, the recommendations in the prior staff report. So that's the first way uh, that we uh, worked to be very sensitive about how we went about this. The second uh, approach that we took was with regard to Linda Lane. Linda Lane is the, uh, the sub street to the left of the site plan. Uh, and we have a small amount of frontage on that roadway. Uh, and the first way that we wanted to be sensitive to that residential street was to avoid having any vehicular access on that roadway whatsoever, whether it was trucks or private vehicles. There is no access to our site from that roadway. The second uh, approach we took was to look at the site, which as Mr. Schaefer said, is heavily wooded, and to you know, not only observe the setbacks, but also uh, within those setbacks, we would preserve the existing tree cover so that not only did we provide an enhanced screening along Thornton Road and Linda Lane, but we also provide an enhanced tree buffer in the zoning buffer that's required at the bottom of the site plan uh, along the one residential property that we directly abut. And then the final way that we uh, worked to be sensitive to our Linda Lane uh, neighbors is that the, the Unified Development Code has a minimum set of standards for public notice for zoning applications, which we understand uh, has been followed in this case. But in addition to that, we voluntarily sent letters to every property owner within 400 feet of our property uh, by certified mail. And we provided Mr. Schaefer with a copy of the letter and the return receipts for all of the neighbors we sent that to. And we just wanted to make them aware of our application and to give them an opportunity to reach out to us if they had any questions or concerns. I don't know if anyone has called Mr. Schaefer's office but no one has called us. So that leads us to believe uh, that there are no concerns along Linda Lane, but if there are, we have done our best to try to reach out proactively in advance of this meeting. Um, so with that, I will cede the floor and uh, accept any questions or, uh, or concerns. Thank you very much, Mr. Buckley, and I appreciate you uh mentioning that you agreed, uh, your client agreed with the condition that had been uh, placed on this matter. Uh, at this point in time, I will open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this application, please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record, make any comments you would like. You have three minutes per person for a total allocated of 30 minutes. Go ahead. Hearing and seeing none, I uh, will now open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition of this application, please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record, make any comments you would like. You would have three minutes per person for a total allocated time of 30 minutes. Go ahead. David Childress, 808 Factory Shows Road, Lift Your Springs, Georgia. Okay, Mr. Childress, what would you like to say? Okay, I live on Factory Shows Road across the street from the million a square foot warehouse. And Factory Shows Road is they go, people been flies up down the road. I've been hit by a car up at my mailbox. And uh, they need speed bumps or something like that. I would rather have excess off of Factory Shows Road because if you look at Turner's Barbecue or Beaver Creek Barbecue, there's a little short strip of road right there and traffic backs up both ways 
during during traffic hours. Sometimes you have to sit through two, uh, red light two or three times. Plus, you got school buses coming through here. Okay, does that conclude your comments, sir? I think so. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. We appreciate uh, we appreciate the I've, input. Yeah, I've, I've lived here for uh, over fifty years. So yes, yes, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition to this application, please unmute your system. You would have three minutes. Hearing none and seeing none, I uh, will close the public hearing on this matter. Planning and Zoning Board, do you have any questions of Mr. Schaefer or of the applicant? Mr. Chairman, this is Rob Thomas. I have a question for Mr. Schaefer. Go ahead. So I see I hear the concerns uh, as far as the uh, traffic pattern on that <clears throat> on the road. Um, what, uh, talk more about the traffic study as to how that would, would be addressed. I noticed, I noticed also that it looked like this as the traffic as it, from this particular uh, site heads out it's like it makes a left one to Thornton Road is that right that would be that the, well the major left or right usually left for I-20 but you could get okay. right turns as well heading right. south so the, the traffic have you had a traffic study they've done traffic analysis uh, several hundred vehicle trips per day for employees but the formal traffic analysis uh, in terms of a large traffic study, no. This is just, this is an effort to say we're, we're asking for a warehouse of this size, which would generate several hundred uh, employee vehicle trips and truck trips per day. So it would, it would impact the, the traffic volume. Um, it will add volume to Factory, Factory Shoals at Thornton, yes. And they will be required to put in a deceleration lane, acceleration, minor acceleration right. lane, and, and have the driveway opposite the existing driveway as you see here. Yeah. So going down to where the gentleman spoke about the traffic, I guess it's further um, south. He's, yeah, he's 808 is, is at the just at the end of where Factory Shoals has already been widened to accommodate these other warehouses. Oh, so it is wide right there. there it's a three lane or four? It's three in front. It's three in front of a portion of his property, and then it narrows down to two on its way over here to Douglas Hill. So he missed section, them up. Yeah, the section in front of his house is two lanes. Okay. So, that is, so that's it, not, it however, that if you're you can, the traffic coming out of 745, however, that is not the direction that they would most likely take. Most most of I, I would say probably at least 95 to 98 percent of their traffic would head out to Thornton, which is the the short route here. Take a left out of their property and just go to Thornton for a left or right, north or south. Uh, okay. All right, but, thank you. You're welcome to ask the applicant's rep if they have uh, more detailed numbers, though. Can I say something again? I know it's out of things, but I'm talking about the warehouses that's down the road and the ones they're building, too. you got traffic going both ways. I'm just mentioning that. I know it's that's off the ground. Mm -hmm. I was letting you know you've got the warehouses that's going below me on, on, uh, on Rock Hill. Chair, Mr. Chair. 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 Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Childress, Mr. Yeah, I've, Childress. I've, got your, I've got your comments, Mr. Childress. Uh, right, thank Mr. You. Childress, we've, we've closed the public hearing on this matter. And any other questions or comments from Planning and Zoning Board? Hearing none, Madam Chairman, I'll yield the floor to the Board of Commissioners for any questions that y'all may have. Thank you so much, Chairman Simmons. Board of Commissioners, do we have any questions for the applicant or uh, or either Bill Schaefer at this time. Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. And can you have Director Valentin to be on standby here in a minute as well? Mm -hmm. Director All Valentin. Right. All right, so again, um, the Thorn Road area, 
Now, I appreciate uh, my citizens' comment. A lot has happened in 50 years. It is the most dense area in the county as relates to light industrial. It is the Mecca. You got that north-south corridor, Camp Creek Thornton. You got I-20. That, that's, that's our future land use map, all that's that light blue, all light industrial. I, I know the impact that this has had to uh, a handful of neighbors and those who are um, single uh, dwelling individuals like my neighbor that just, uh, like my citizen just spoke. I get it. And so um, I, I think to your point, Phil, you answered my question, which is, but did y'all hear his voice? And just, just acknowledge, sometimes it's just acknowledgement. This thing's already in motion. We've done a master plan study regarding this area. About four years ago, we got all the residents, all the developers all weighed into this. And we've, we've tried to put some sensitivity into all of this. So whenever this subject comes up, I'm like, I know, I understand. That residential on top of industrial, right? The neighborhoods to a, down the street who are caught in an island, right? When it's built up, like when we get property rights, we understand. But it's just being sensitive. So here's my question to the applicant. Um, you, I, I appreciate you doing the, the forest uh, preservation. I appreciate you not accessing the lane. I appreciate you talking to the staff. I appreciate you sending notices to uh, the handful of, of residents that are on the lane. Um, it sounds like, but you didn't have any conversations with them directly. Um, Bill Schaefer. When you guys briefed me, your staff, you specifically said that there was some conversation. What were the conversations with the neighbors themselves, the residential? Can you say that for the record, please? For the record, I did speak with two property owners on Linda Lane. The property owner, um, let me just grab the ownership interest here because I think it was uh, Mr. Cantrell. So Mr. Cantrell and Mrs. Cantrell own a number of properties up here, as well as the property owner directly adjacent to the property in question. And when I explained that there would be no access through Linda Lane and that there would be a buffer, he chose not to come to this evening's meeting and express any concerns other than to me that he was worried that Linda Lane would somehow be accessed by any of the vehicles. So once that was done away with, he seemed to be accepting of the project's rezoning request. Okay, that was one, do you have the other one? Yes, the 808, so that's the other person that I spoke with was Mr. Childress. Got it, all right, so we just wanna make sure with record that it, it's acknowledged. Um, that's important, Mr. Childress, I, I get it. And we wanted to make sure we do, we, we did put that out there. All right, so I, I get the, the application, so Miguel, um, obviously, it's been noted that Linda Lane would not be accessed per se. Talk to us about Factory Shoals. This is my last point. Talk to us about Factory Shoals, how it was designed, how it would handle this volume. Just speak to it from your perspective, please. Thank you. Er, certainly, be happy to. Uh, we have been in, in communication with the Georgia DOT, uh, who has maintenance jurisdiction over Thornton Road, uh, to do improvements to the intersection to essentially uh, align better the two sides of Thornton Road, Factory Shoals onto Thornton Road, uh, because both sides have developed over time and some of the lanes are offset. They're not directly across from each other. And so we have been, um, uh, we've sub submitted uh, plans, uh, discussed plans with them and they have agreed uh, to consider uh, those improvements uh, to be done by uh, the Georgia DOT as a quick response project. The intent is to better align the intersection to improve the traffic flow. Uh, so the part of the, uh, of the uh, work that's going to be required would be a relocation of islands or total removal, uh, restriping of the intersection, uh, again, to improve traffic flow. Part of the issue, of course, being that there was a development, particularly on the south side of the road, on both sides of Thornton, east and west, but on the south side of Factory Shoals, that um, uh, changed the configuration of, of that part of the road. 
uh, whereas on the north side where this development is being proposed, uh, that has not occurred. So uh, we have been um, trying to address the issue of now we're gonna have a, a three lane configuration industrial road factory shows on one side and a two lane uh, on the other side and we need to make those align better. But so, so to, to, the, to the issue of uh, improved flow and congestion, no question that, um, that there can be improvements uh, to the intersection. One of the conditions that, that we uh, initially, when we looked at the plan, uh, had on this um, uh, development, actually the prior one as well, was that, that they line up the driveways to improve uh, access to and from those sites and to minimize uh, the potential impact of backing traffic up onto Thornton Road and the same going in the opposite direction so that when traffic gets to the intersection, they will have a dedicated lane to turn either left or right uh, by improvements, uh, restriping of the road as necessary. And of course, the construction of the improvements on, now on the north side uh, to bracket the intersection. So. Uh, the expectation is that that project um, will be moved forward in uh, 2022, early 2022, based on discussions with the DOT. So they have looked at it, at it favorably for, um, for moving it as quickly as uh, they can put it into the system. Uh, it will improve flow uh, for existing traffic and certainly uh, will help accommodate this additional traffic from this proposed development. And, and to, to Phil's point earlier, the expectation would be that most of the traffic would be turning uh, left out of the site to, um, to access Thornton Road. Uh, but to acknowledge uh, what uh, uh, the resident, Mr. Childress, indicated that he's had some issues with vehicles hitting his mailbox, as I heard. Um, there is a section of the road that transitions from the three lane back to, to two lane and, and perhaps uh, there, you know, something that we can look at because eventually the, the expectation is uh, and the goal is for that entire segment of factory shoals from Thornton to uh, at least Douglas Hill to be a three lane industrial configuration. So when those improvements are made, uh, it will be a more consistent cross section of the road and perhaps uh, would address some of the concerns that the resident has expressed. Okay. So thank you for that. So recognizing this is a joint meeting of the Board of Commissioners and Planning and Zoning, and we came out of recess from this morning when we actually talked about our comprehensive transportation plan. Is this something that, um, that, that which you, we hope to adopt uh, in the next um, Board of Commission meeting. Is this something that's on the list which you just referenced? Because I'm trying to set citizens' expectations like it's duly noted. Uh, we went through a master planning area. We know this area is important. I know we set aside some money for this area to address certain concerns. So sometimes it's what we as developers and applicants to do, but sometimes we have our part to play. Um, are we positioned to, to deal with this in 2020 to support the GDOS efforts uh, in 2022 with a quick response, but also uh, probably look, sounds like a little bit more a moderate term plan to deal with the widening to the three lanes. Is that on our CTP list? Yes, it is, Commissioner. Uh, it, it has been incorporated into the CTP, not only the, the future widening of factory shoals uh, as envisioned in the master plan, but also the reconfiguration of the intersection. We have been fortunate there uh, to have the uh, support of the Georgia DOT so that, that's gonna become essentially a GDOT project, but uh, to help improve the flow of traffic in the area um, as it was envisioned in the master plan. Okay, make sure we mark this. I'll bring this up in the next committee meeting to um, the citizens that weighed in, duly noted, you've been heard. Appreciate your comments. It's something that I'll take up um, to ensure that, that, that it, the attention is not lost with there. Um, I don't want to derail the moment as far as commentary, but it's important that we always acknowledge our citizens and their concerns. I recognize that this is in play, but yet he still has a voice that matters. So with that being said, Madam Chair, I'm good. I'm sufficiently, um, questions have been sufficient, sufficiently answered for me. I'm good. I'm going to yield now to my peers. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Vice Chairman Robinson. Any other questions, board, or comments? Okay, if there are none, I yield back. Okay, Commissioner Guider, you have the floor. Yes, I, I just wanted to ask the citizen: uh, is is there a site problem coming out of your driveway? Is that where you said you were hit? Coming I was, out. I, my, my my mailbox wasn't hit. I was, and they didn't stop. I mean, I, and but uh, my concern was basically cars flying up and down and up down the road right here. And uh, there's businesses down the road too, because he was saying everybody's going left, but I'm thinking about the traffic that's going up the road too. They're gonna to be having access to get in and out of. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of concerns with me about this stuff right here. Okay, but uh, is there a site problem when you drive? Pull well, there's, a, there's, a, sharp, there's a sharp curve uh, right around right behind my house that people come flying up and then there's they come down the hill flying so yeah. i got hit going down the hill what is the speed limit in that area 35 that's why i sit there and says uh, if y'all do it i would like to have speed bumps to keep people from speeding okay um 35 is not that bad but they are probably speeding <laughs> yeah they're not they're, they're not so, doing 35 uh, maybe some more signage or something. Uh, I'll, I'll leave that up to Director uh, Valentine. But uh, sometimes um, just make them aware that uh, they're speeding or something. Maybe a flashing light. I don't know. But um, I just want to say speed bumps. I figured that'd be the they keep people slowing down, like yeah. speed brakes to keep them from going to spoke so fast. That was my suggestion. Yeah, maybe they will consider that when they're uh, considering what they're going to do with the, uh, the curve there and everything. All right, I yield back. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Commissioner. All right, if there are no uh, further remarks from the Board of Commissioners, I yield back to you, Chairman Simmons. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman, Board of Commissioners. Uh, Planning and Zoning Board, you have heard the uh, discussion. You've heard the comments, questions. Uh, do I have a motion, please? Planning and Zoning Board, Mr. do I Chairman. have a motion? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, it's Rob Thomas. I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, application Z 2021-71, request a rezoning from CG General Commercial to uh, LI Light Industrial for warehouse with the, with the findings and conditions uh, that was presented by staff. Thank you very much, Mr. Thomas. I have a motion, do I have a second? Mr. Chairman, it's Curtin Nicholson, I second that. Uh, thank you, Ms. Nicholson. I have a motion and a second planning and zoning board. Do I have any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I will call for a vote on the matter to approve Z2021-71. If you would answer in the affirmative or the negative when I call your name, Mr. Nicholson. Yay. Mr. Payne. Yay. Mr. Curry. Yay. Mr. Penniman. Yay. Ms. Knowles. Yay. Mr. Thomas. Yay. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. I will throw it over the Board of Commissioners with a unanimous recommendation for approval of Z2021-71. Thank you, Chairman Simmons. Board of Commissioners, you've heard all the questions and answers. Do we have a motion to approve? Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve or to accept the recommendation to approve um, application Z2021-71 with the conditions as stated. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, second. second? okay, we have a motion and a second in a discussion board. Yes, one, one point. Mm -hmm. Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Yes, Director Valentin, to that point, recognizing that there perhaps is expansion, there'll be signage that comes with that. Um, is there, uh, you can additional signage beat to Madam Guider's suggestion? I'd like you to look into making sure that um, if there's some type of prominence, you know, I am about speeding on the county line and everywhere else. Can you look into that for us? We uh, certainly will. Uh, that's a conditional on our, our side. 
All right, Madam Chair, I yield back. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion items? Okay, there's no other discussion. Please uh, respond accordingly. District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman, yes, we have a full unanimous vote and the motion carried. I yield back to you, Chairman Simmons. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Uh, Mr. Buckley, uh, it has been approved and we uh, notice your chat uh, that yes, we do have the uh, traffic study that was included in our packet here, but well, we wish you the best of luck going forward, Mr. Buckley. Uh, Thank Mr. you all Roberts, very much. You're welcome, sir. Uh, Mr. Roberts, would you introduce the next agenda item, please? Yes, sir, I will. Terminus Allied Capital LLC, S2021-72. The applicant is Kevin Trowers. The location is Douglas Hill Road in Landlot 878, District 18, Section 2, Parcel 2 and 3. Current zoning LI and LIC. It's light industrial and light industrial with conditions. The request is for a special use permit on 7.83 acres. This is commission district number two. The proposed use is tractor and general cargo trailer parking facility. Staff's recommendation is for approval with conditions. This is Phil Schaefer's case chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Roberts. Mr. Schaefer, would you uh, now provide the staff findings and recommendations for us, please? Yes, Mr. Chairman. So this is, a, again, a parcel over here in the industrial area that we were just talking about. The property consists of two parcels. They're both heavily wooded. Uh, north parcel is light industrial. South parcel is actually light LIR, light industrial restricted. Apologies for that. The proposal is to develop approximately 193 semi-trailer sized parking spaces to accommodate predominantly trailer parking, but those spaces could also park truck cabs separately separated from the trucks. There'll be a guard shack on the structure as well as fencing and an entry gate. The sewer would and water would be tapped into in the Douglas Hill uh, frontage. And, and additional details identify a number of tree islands and landscaping features that will be required. As you can see from the zoning map, the northern property is uh, light industrial and the southern property is light industrial restricted. The actual context in which it sits, as you can see, is Douglas Hill uh, Road in the middle of all of the warehousing itself. Uh, one of the things that we've uh, noted over the last year or so, this is the site plan, is that a number of these warehouses uh, are spilling their tractor trailers onto the road um, due to loading requirements and call out requirements. And what the applicant is seeking to do is have on-site truck parking for the trailer component specifically, which is in tremendous need right now as warehousing facilities will do whatever it is they do to build up an inventory that then requires a call for a number of trailers to be able to load out that inventory. And so they will hire the cab drivers to come and take their trucks, hook them up to the trailers and bring them over to the warehouse for the loadout. Uh, as you can see from the site plan, it's quite, quite compacted. Um, under the code, there's a little bit more area, I believe that might be required for um, landscaping. We, we have a 20, 25% requirement on landscaping in this area under the quality growth overlay district, but it is 193. They're all trailer spaces that we counted up along with the guard shack, et cetera, um, and fencing, landscaping, curb gutter, deceleration lane. The property, the project developers have been through the development review committee and have been given impact statements as well for this staff report. And they have redesigned the site according to our comments at the development review committee to try and accommodate all of the questions and concerns from uh, both engineering as well as zoning as well as DOT. Um, the property is here on the left hand side of Douglas Hill Road. Uh, on the right, you can see there's an existing building. This is looking south along Douglas Hill Road. They're um, looking north along Douglas Hill. Again, the prop, the blue. This, this area over here with the trees is where the project would be. This is an existing driveway. And in the distance, you can see the hill that we all refer to where Factory Shoals comes into Douglas Hill. 
and the 965 building that was recently built up there at the top end. Uh, again, here is an existing road. This is the north end of their property. This is a road into an industrial site as well. And then here's the existing entry, north entry into one of the Lincoln building projects. Um, the staff reviewed the special use permit criteria and the application does meet all of the criteria for the special use. Uh, staff is recommending approval of the special use permit with the following findings that the use will not modify the land use plan or the intent purpose or spirit of the Douglas County Unified Development Code. The proposed use is consistent with the comprehensive future land use plan. Categorization of the property is within the Commerce Center area, which incorporates mixed commercial and industrial uses. The use will not negatively impact surrounding properties. The granting of the special use permit will not adversely affect the public health, safety, or welfare. We did put a couple of conditions uh, requested onto this one. The number one condition being that all vehicles or equipment parked on site shall be in good working condition, properly licensed, tagged, and in no instance can any item or vehicle stored on site be directly displayed or as advertised for sale. That any use of the property not identified within section 210 uses allowed in each zone district specifically Table 2.2, principal uses allowed by right, and 2.3, accessory uses allowed by right of the Douglas County Unified Development Code may require submission, review, and approval of a new special use permit. Three, parking must be contained within the property. No on-street parking along Douglas Hill Road and or in the right-of-way shall be permitted. And that number four, the applicant shall submit to the Development Review Committee, DRC, for review and consideration the specific site development and access management plans to address the development standards in the UDC and the concerns and requirements expressed in specific agency impact statements reviewed in the staff report dated November 30th, 2021. And then staff has, of course, the annual inspection to verify for uh, compliance with the code as well as the conditions of approval at the one year anniversary. And if anything is not in compliance, we have the ability to bring it back to you um, and let them show cause why it wouldn't be revoked. And with that, uh, I'll turn it back over to you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I believe the applicants on the line or the representative is, I, I thought I saw their names. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Schaefer. Uh, will the applicant or the applicant's representative please unmute yourself, state your name and address for the record, present any information you would like planning and zoning board, board of commissioners to hear. You have 15 minutes. Uh, thank you, Taylor Smith. Uh, 1411 Bates Court, Atlanta, Georgia, 30319. I'm here with Bo Acuff as well. Um, I want to thank uh, staff, Phil Schaefer in particular. We spent a lot of time on this project trying to get it right. And um, I really appreciate all of his input as long as, as well as the input of the DRC. We did make some changes to try and incorporate more landscaping throughout the site to get to that 25% uh, coverage. Um, as far as you know, this project goes in particular, we kind of view this as a way to help alleviate the, the trailers that are starting to pile up on the sides of the roads. And we think that this, you know, there's obviously a, a, a need for this and that these should be, these trailers should be stored in an appropriate manner. Um, again, we, will, we are gonna comply with all conditions that are were proposed by staff. Uh, so we have no issues there. And again, we just are grateful for everybody's help on this project. Thank you, you have anything much. else you, you want to add, please feel free. Um, I, I second everything you said, Taylor. And uh, you. we need to state your name and address for the record, please. Yeah, this is Bo Acuff. Um, I, that is 515, um, no, excuse me, 6, 1160 Niles Avenue, Northwest, Atlanta, Georgia, 30318. Thank and you, I have nothing additional to add to Mr. Smith. And I'll um, defer back to Mr. Schaefer. Okay, if you just uh, stand by, you and uh, Mr. Smith stand by for a moment. I will open the public hearing on this. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this application, please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record, make any comments you would like. You would have three minutes per person for a total allocated of 30 minutes. Go ahead.
hearing of seeing none, I will now open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application, please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record, then make any comments you would like. You would have three minutes per person for a total of 30 minutes allocated. <clears throat> Go ahead. Hearing or seeing no one trying to make a comment at this point in time, I will close the public hearing on this matter. Uh, Planning and Zoning Board, do you have any questions of the applicant, the applicant's representative, or Mr. Schaefer? Uh, this is Frank Payne. Uh, Mr. Smith, uh, it looks like there are quite a, quite a few uh, uh, locations, uh, parking sp uh, spots on there. How many, how many trailers do you think you would uh, have uh, access to? So we're showing 193 spaces shown on that site plan. Now, most of these facilities don't operate at full capacity. Um, so, I, you know, estimate would be 75% capacity is kind of a general rule of thumb. Will they have, uh, have uh, loading the things on the trucks, uh, on the beds? Will they have inventory? Yes. More than likely not. Okay, so you can, there will be empty. Yeah. Do you have any provisions for our environmental aspect for, um, say for uh, if the if they were leaking or anything like that or any uh, any fuel or we we this will not be for fuel storage containers whatsoever. That okay. Will, that, that will not be allowed to use. All right. Any other questions from Planning and Zoning Board? Hearing none, Madam Chairman, I'll throw it over to uh, plan the Board of Commissioners for any questions that y'all may have. Thank you. Board of Commissioners, do you have any questions or remarks at this time? Or Thank I? you. Okay, Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Thank you. Can you see me? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, okay, all right. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Obviously, we've had this conversation recently um, as a county, uh, as leadership. On how do we deal with this? Um, I, I think this is a good first step um, as far as dealing with the need for trailer parking. So here's my first question. I heard that about cabs. All right, so I, and I get it. This is like having asphalt and everything else on standby. You got to stop out with trailers. It's a flex business model. When they need them, they can go call some people like, y'all go hook up, come do this. I get it. I get the business model. Um, but the question becomes, and so right now you're saying these are just going to be straight trailers by themselves with no calves, but it has calves if you choose to alter your business model, which I'm not challenging. I'm just I'm clarifying. So what are the rules around that? Will there be people there? Or is this just strictly, uh, we're just parking passive assets? This is passive, totally passive. This is not, this is not a rest stop. This is not, this is purely a passive. And then again, I think the, um, the staff recommendations, you and highlighted that, which we're in favor of. I want to bring that out. And, and so I, I, make no, it I, I understand and I appreciate that. Yeah, we're, we're bringing a point. I mean, I don't know how many truckers we need. I saw some national count. I get that we're trying to get the, the youth to get the CDLs, but I've got a fundamental issue amongst us in the county. Says, okay, but you can work amongst us, but you can't live amongst us. What do you park this stuff? All right, so it sounds like these are, now these are going to be owned by people who are around, uh, perhaps, I mean, I don't know how many, I've got what, three, four million square feet worth of light industrial around there, a lot of truck traffic. So would the clients, would the people parking there would be people locally there or further in the region? Tell me about how, who's, so who's it can be a parking there. Yeah, it could be a variety. It could be a trucking company that operates in the area, whether yeah. that's J.B. Hunt or Warner. It could also be a 3PL, yeah. um, such as Alpo. That's, and um, other, other, you know, there's other uh, logistics companies in that area. So I think what we're trying to solve for, and I think everybody, and this is kind of around the country now, is you're trying to you know make sure you have enough excess capacity within your supply chain, and this is what's helping solve for that. You know, understood. And 
we again, we're just local where, you know, people still have to live and work and, 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 and how do you park these assets? You're going spilling over into neighborhoods, spilling over into streets right. and stuff. Yeah. And I, I think this is a, uh, an important point. Uh, we, as um, you know, with our planners and uh, as us as the governing authority, we have to figure out well, what's the, the best spot for it. It's not that the need is not there, but it's always about location, best use, real estate, location, location. I, I recognize and always for so that at least in, in my district, that I would be a great candidate to begin to sort of do this. Some things we've considered but fast. I, I get it. It may not be a good fit, but this one's already in play. This character area is already there. So I, um, this optimization of this area, obviously you got, you know, a, this is basically a support service for the broader need. Uh, a supply chain, to your point, I think it's key. Just like we have stockpiles of asphalt and, and, and stuff that we crunch up for roads and stuff. This is as important. Everybody want that Amazon there. Everybody want that Christmas stuff there. Well, how do you think it's going to get there? Yeah. How do you, you think stuff moves around? Yeah. But yet here locally, uh, when people who actually are doing the actual work, I think it's important that we also have a place to sort of accommodate that um, as well. So I just want to make a statement regarding this. This is, this is more of a historical and a present, you know, guys, this is where I stand on this one. I think this is a good use. Um, it's a good first step. I know we've got some other growth challenges that all of you, um, my fellow peers, will have to consider. Um, but I just want to make that statement, Madam Chair. I have no further questions. I'm very clear on what this is. I yield. All right. Thank you so much, Vice Chair. Any other questions, board? Madam Chair. Okay, Commissioner, you have the floor. Yes, uh, Mr. Smith. Uh, a lot of the tractor trailer units, they're looking for a place to park both. <laughs> we see them on the ramps everywhere because of the uh, hours when they give out of their hours, they have to stop. Yes, ma'am. So is there any plans for the tractor to park here? Because um, a lot of subdivisions will not allow tractors to park. Yes, ma'am. So, yeah, so this will be for both the tractor and the trailer. This will be for both. Yes, not, not hooked together. Not hooked together, though. Okay, okay. Uh, maybe I just missed that or something, but uh, I didn't know that because I, I know there's a need for parking for both the tractor and the trailer. So, um, and, but there will never be anybody in the sleeper spending the night or anything, right? No, ma'am. Okay. And uh, is there a guard on duty at all times? There is a guard check. I, we haven't determined the hours. Again, we're going to leave that up to the users that ultimately end up, you know, using this facility. Okay. I guess there'll be a key punch entry or something. There'll be remote. There'll be a remote. Okay. All right. Uh, well, thank you very much. That's all I had. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Vader. Any other remarks, board? Thank you, uh, board. I'll yield back to you, Chairman Simmons. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman, Planning and Zoning Board. You have <clears throat> heard the discussion, questions, answers. Do I have a motion, please? Chairman Briggs, this is Rob Thomas. I'd like to make the motion. Go ahead. I can make a motion to approve application 2021-72, a request for special use approval to allow truck trailer parking storage with a guard shack and gate with the following, uh, with the findings and conditions read in by the staff. Thank you very much, Mr. Thomas. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Second. And that was? Curry. Mr. Curry, thank you very much. I have a motion and a second. Do I have any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I will call for the question. Anyone wishing to vote in favor of the application to approve Z2021-72, please respond in the affirmative. Mr. Thomas. Yay. Ms. Knowles. Yay. Mr. Penniman. Yay. Mr. Curry. Yay. Mr. Payne. Nay. Uh, Mr. Nicholson. Yay. Thank you very much, Planning and Zoning, Madam Chairman. I will turn it over to the Board of Commissioners with an approval of S2021-72.
Thank you so much, Chairman Simmons. Board of Commissioners, you've heard all the questions and answers. We have a motion to approve. Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. we have Thank, you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I make a motion to accept the recommendation of the Planning and Zoning Board to approve um, application Z 2021 72 with findings and conditions as read into the record. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion, board? We have a motion and a second. We want to call your district. Please respond accordingly. District one. District one. District two. Yes. District four. Yes. District one. Yes. The chairman. Yes. We have a four or unanimous vote, and the motion carries. I yield back to you, Chairman Simmons. Thank you very much. Um, wish you the best, Mr. Taylor and Mr. Acock going forward on this matter. Uh, Mr. Roberts, would you introduce the next agenda item, please? I certainly will, Chairman. It's S2021-73. The applicant is Jeremy Little, property owner, Rhonda Rivers. Location 4076 South Shelby Lane, Douglasville, 30135. Landlot. 44, First District, Fifth Section, Parcel 26. Current zoning is RLD. The request this evening is for a special use permit on the point, on point 45 acres. And this is Commission District Number Three. Proposed use is home occupation, photography, and digital media studio. The recommendation is approval with with conditions. And Ms. Duncan will be presenting this case. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Duncan, would you uh, please present the uh, staff findings and recommendations for us, please? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, the property uh, is located on the east side of South Shelby Lane. Uh, it is located in the Shelby Forest subdivision. Uh, there's a single family residence on the property that contains approximately 1,600 square feet of living space. The applicant is proposing to establish a home occupation uh, as an art and photography studio. Um, he will allow clients by appointment only. His proposed hours of operation uh, are seven days per week between the hours of 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., and only one party will be booked for an appointment at a time. Uh, here is the image from the zoning map showing the residential low density zoning. Uh, you can also see that the, the property is, is, the, is the last house in a subdivision that, that ends into an undeveloped tract. Uh, here is an aerial, again, showing the location of the structure, uh, and you can see it backs up to an undeveloped piece of property. Here's a view of the, the property from the street. Staff has analyzed the criteria uh, for special use permit and the Unified Development Code, and we have found that the request is substantially compatible with the criteria. Uh, therefore, the planning department is recommending approval of this request with the following conditions. Number one, the special use permit is to allow an in-home studio for photography and other digital media production and for no other purpose. Number two, the home occupation shall be conducted in a conformance to the requirements of Article 3, Section 334C in regard to a home business. Number three, there shall be no parking of vehicles within the right of way of South Shelby Lane. Number four, the home occupation shall operate seven days per week between the hours of 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. And number five, the applicant must satisfy all environmental health requirements of the Douglas County Public Health Department prior to the issuance of a business license. And that concludes my report. Thank you very much, Ms. Duncan. Uh, will the applicant or the applicant's representative please unmute yourself, state your name and address for the record, present any information you would like for the Planning and Zoning Board and Board of Commissioners to hear. You have 15 minutes allocated. Go ahead. Good evening, Council uh, and members of the public. My name is Jeremy Little and I am representing Batusan LLC. Uh -huh. Our address is 4076 South Shelby Lane, Douglasville, Georgia. Uh, we are a company opened by my mother and I, uh, property owner, Rhonda Rivers. She's also in attendance. We are looking to make a mark by bringing a new photography studio into the Douglasville area. Our company, Vontusant, opened for public business on December 2nd, 2020. And we have seen much progression and have continued to build relationships with fellow Douglasville artists who have been looking to uh, have a place to create without having to travel all the way into Atlanta. Uh, we've had a number of clients in person and from all over the country who have purchased our canvas and acrylic prints featuring photography taken by me, home decor and apparel design in-house, uh, videography featuring and promoting tourism in the Douglasville metro Atlanta area, 
And of course, while we're here, uh, the studio photography. Uh, we do not plan to upset our already quiet neighborhood. In fact, we plan to keep it that way. Our clients are only invited when and if they have an appointment. Uh, while we do accept referrals, that is again by appointment. We are located on a dead end street and are literally the last house on the left. Uh, we have enough space and area for plenty of parking on the property, none, none of which should ever disturb our neighbors. Uh, we are asking for your appro approval to continue our growth in Douglasville and the greater Georgia area. Um, Rhonda Rivers is also here. She's the owner of the property and she has anything to say, um, but thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Mr. Little. Uh, if you would just stand by for a few minutes. Uh, sure. At this point in time, I will open the public hearing on this matter. <clears throat> Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this application, please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record, then make any comments you would like. Each person has three minutes for a allocated time of 30 minutes. Go ahead. Hello, my name is um, Summers Wilson. I am from um, Austell, Georgia. I am at 7030 Panda Lane in Austell. And I'm a local creative and I plan on using um, Mr. Little's space as a place where I can go um, do some creative thinking as well as um, do some photography and just all around um, bring my clients there when I need to um, take some pictures um, of them and as well as um, do some creative thinking. And I think it will be a very um, great space within the community as a place where we can all gather and just um, a place where it would be a great thinking area for, for all the creatives that are in the Douglas Allstale area. Um, community. That's all. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Wilson. We appreciate it. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this application, uh, unmute your system. You would have three minutes. Hi, my name is Rhonda Rivers. Are you able to hear me, first of all? Yes, Ms. Rivers, we may hear you. Um, perfect. Um, yes, <laughs> I am I am Jeremy Little's mom. And um, first of all, I approve everything that he said, but to add to it, um, it's a new business, new area, and we are new transplants from New Jersey. And we're just looking to expand on some of the great work that he's been doing thus far. And I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Rivers. We appreciate your comments. Anyone else wishing to uh, make a comment in favor of this application? Okay. Was there someone else? Okay, if everyone would please mute your system. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application, please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record, then make any comments you would like. You would have three minutes per person for a total of 30 minutes allocated. Go ahead. Hearing and seeing none, I will close the public hearing on this matter. Uh, Planning and Zoning Board, do you have any questions of the applicant or of Ms. Duncan? Hearing none from Planning and Zoning Board, Madam Chairman, I'll yield the floor to you for questions from the Board of Commissioners. Thank you so much, Chairman Simmons. Board of Commissioners, at this time, do you have any questions uh, for the applicant or either uh, Mr. Schaefer? Okay, me and Nana, I yield back to you, Chairman Simmons. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Planning and Zoning Board, you have heard the questions, the comments. Uh, do I have a motion, please? Mr. Chairman, it's Kurt Nicholson. I'll make a yes, motion sir. to approve application S2021-73 at uh, 4076 Shel South Shelby Lane with the conditions and findings that read by, I'm sorry, conditions as read by staff. Thank you. Uh, th thank you very much. Uh, do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Second. 
I have a motion and I have a second. Uh, at this point in time, in order to clarify something, Mr. Little, uh, you have heard the conditions that were read into the uh, record. Uh, are you in agreement with those five conditions? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Le Mr. Little. Uh, Planning and Zoning Board, I have a motion, I have a second. Do we have any discussion? <clears throat> I'll call for the question. Everyone wishing to approve S-2021-73, uh, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Mr. Curry. Yay. <laughs> Mr. Payne. Yay. Mr. Nicholson. Yay. Uh, Mr. Peniman. Yay. Ms. Knowles. Yay. Mr. Thomas. Yay. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. I will throw it over to the Board of Commissioners with a uh, recommendation for approval of S-2021-73. Thank you all. Madam Chairman. I'm so sorry, I had a conversation about myself. <laughs> Board of Commissioners, you have heard all the questions and answers. Do we have a motion to approve S-2021-73 with all the conditions stated, all five conditions stated by the Planning and Zoning Board? Board of Commissioners. Yes, ma'am, I make a motion to approve um, S20, what was it? 21, <laughs> 73. 20, 21, 70. Um, 73. 73, I'm sorry. I couldn't find my glasses. Um, as uh, as uh, approved by the Planning and Zoning Board with the five conditions stated. Okay, do we have a second? Okay, second. We have a motion and a second in a discussion board. We have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District one. District one. District two. District two. Mitchell's trying to say something. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I was. On mute. Yes, for one. Yes, yeah, District One. Yes, okay. District Two. I'm not sure if we lost Commissioner Robinson or not. District Four. Yes. Okay. District Two. Allison, can you see Commissioner Robinson on on the line? Um, he is on the line and he is unmuted. I don't see him in front of his camera. Um, so he may have stepped away. Okay. Mm -hmm. Chairman, yes. Um, let me give him one more second and then we, we do have a quorum. So you said you still don't see him, Allison. No, ma'am, I don't see him in front of his camera, but I do see that he is unmuted and his camera is on. Okay. Let me give him a few more seconds and hmm. Attorney Bernard. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to move forward with, with three votes. That's a quorum. We okay with that or? Yeah, the three will carry it with quorum. That's correct. Okay, just want to make sure. Okay, Board of Commissioners, we have a 3 0 vote in the motion carries. I yield back to you, uh, Chairman Simmons. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Mr. Little. Ms. Rivers, we wish you the best in this venture going forward. Uh, Mr. Roberts, would you uh, introduce the next agenda item, please? Yes, Chairman, I will. We only have one more, and then we have the UDC uh, update. The, the, this is uh, S-2021-74. The applicant is Douglas County. Uh, property owner, Arbor Heights Baptist Church, 3506 Reynolds Road, Landlot 26, 1st District, 5th Section, Parcel 33, current zoning RLD. The request is for a special use permit on 7.95 acres. 
Uh, it's District 3. The proposed use is a 100-foot monopine telecommunications tower and associated ground equipment. Recommendation from the staff is for approval. This is Phil Schaefer's case, Chairman. Thank you very much. Mr. Schaefer, would you uh, introduce uh, the staff findings and the recommendations for us on this matter? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Good. The subject property, as was mentioned, on the east side of Reynolds Road at the rear of the existing church property. Uh, the property is developed with church structure, parking lot areas immediately off Reynolds Road, and the athletic field to the rear of the church. The specific tower lease site is in a wooded copse at the back of the property uh, in the northeast corner. It is within a, a hardwood and conifer tree um, forested area somewhat removed from the property line, which we'll get into. The applicant, we are proposing a 40 by 40 fenced compound lease area on the site for the placement of a 100 foot monopine telecommunication tower. Access to the site will come from an existing driveway on the north edge of the property that goes into the church and a leased gravel drive area to the fenced compound. The proposed tower is less than 200 feet and so it will not require lighting per the FAA requirements. As you can see, the zoning is RLD. The surrounding zoning is likewise RLD in the county, and the city is residential as well at the northeast corner. Um, uh, here's a better overall map showing the subdivisions that surround this site. Uh, as you look at Stewart Mill, Reynolds Road, Chapel Hill, the topography in this area has a pretty decent dip into a valley and the proposed tower location would allow for uh, increased coverage within this one and a half mile radius around the church site. Uh, I will point out that under section 343 of our uh, Unified Development Code, the county requires specific information to be reviewed by a licensed independent registered engineer uh, registered in the state of Georgia. And we hired, um, the assistance of Mr. Christopher K. Horn, professional engineer and PhD, in his capacity as a prof registered professional engineer to review and comment on the application's compliance with the requirements. His comments follow his report is dated July 23rd, 2021, and was attached to the addendum and is part of the record uh, from previously being heard. In his capacity and reviewing the special use permit tower criteria, he found that all of the criteria, and there are 17 of them, were in fact supportive of the requested tower. I will also point out the reason for the location of the tower is that in our code under section 343, there are prohibited locations. Towers and alternative tower structures shall not be permitted in any approved residential subdivision unless the lot in the subdivision is greater than five acres and is occupied by an institutional use as identified by the Douglas County Planning Department. That one is why they did not, we did not ask to seek the tower location in any of the surrounding residentially subdivided property. The second portion here, part B, micro and macro telecommunications facilities are not allowed on any single family, two family or manufactured home. In residential zoning district as established by uh, Table 2.1 of the land of the use of land and structures article of this development code, micro and macro telecommunication facilities may only be located on a non-residential use allowed in such residential zoning district. And so this church zoned residentially is the only institutional use within a couple of miles of this descent, this topography that creates a valley here. And so that is the reason for the subject property being the chosen site for the tower. Um, we do have Mr. Horn available for questions if you would like to ask. I will just go through the rest of our staff lineup so that you can see the site plan. You can see uh, the chosen site at the rear of the property, the setback and property lines. This is the analysis of tree cover that would have to be removed from the property uh, in order to install the uh, tower. The tower's location is 141 feet from the nearest residence. It is only 100 feet tall, so there is no concern over the safety of the tower 
collapsing in some fashion that might affect any adjacent properties. Uh, nor would it affect the church, which is likewise several, a couple of hundred feet from the tower itself. The tower's design is a camouflaged monopole looking like a pine tree. Um, there will be at least two locations at the top of this tower for uh, antennae. The top tower antennae location uh, would be the initially installed uh, tower communications equipment. Um, the location here in yellow Photographs were taken from adjoining properties looking back at the tower so that you can see. Um, tower height location here on the right is view number four. So that's in the parking lot of the, the church itself. Looking through the front tree line, you would not be able to see the tower. The second location here is looking in view number five, coming in from the subdivision to the north of the property. You are looking up a, a, quite a grade and so the tree cover and tree line from the back would not allow for visibility of the tower. The only truly visible location is in fact from view number two, which on the left is what it looks like now. You're looking through the homes in the cul-de-sac that uh, adjoins the baseball field. The trees in the rear are the tree cover that the monopine would be established in. On the right is a picture of what the monopine would look like as you look through the tree cover from that cul-de-sac. The coverage for the radio frequency is on the left is what you have right now, gray and orange. It does not have a significant uh, coverage in the current configuration. If you add the tower in, you can see the improved coverage. Uh, one of the issues that arose, and we can cover it if you wish, but one of the issues that we may talk about, and I'll wait for any questions, is whether the Douglas County County Commissioners have the ability to coordinate with federal law. And when we review these towers under Section 343, there is a section in here, Section N, Coordination with Federal Law, where the Board of Commissioners finds that an application of this section would unreasonably discriminate among providers of functionally equivalent personal wireless services or prohibit or have the effect of prohibiting the provision of personal wireless services, a special use approval waiving any or all provisions of this section may be granted. And staff is recommending approval with the findings that the rezoning will not modify the intent, purpose, or spirit of the Douglas County Unified Development Code, that the use is permissible in the zone district and generally compatible with surrounding properties and the granting of the special use will not adversely affect public health, safety, or welfare. Condition one, that the applicant will submit to the Development Review Committee, DRC, for review and consideration, site-specific development and access management plans to address the development standards in the UDC and the concerns and requirements expressed in any specific agency impact statements reviewed by the staff report that was dated November 30th, 2021. And then there's a directive to staff to go out at the annual anniversary and just confirm that we have complied with the code and all of the conditions and requirements as imposed on the uh, approval. With that, I'll see if there are any questions. And again, as I mentioned, we do have our uh, radio frequency engineer available if you would like for him to answer any specific questions. Uh, okay, hey, Phil, Mr. Chair, can I jump in here? Yes, sir. <clears throat> just want to just want to clarify one thing that Phil said. Phil, you said the applicant. You were given a condition, and you said the applicant. I would change that word from applicant to whoever the developer of the site tower ultimately is. Okay. All right. Because Douglas County is seeking this application. It's not actually putting the tower up itself. Correct. So do you do you want to re rephrase that so it's clear that condition? Condition number one, the developer will submit to the development review committee for review and consideration, the specific site development and access management plans to address the development standards in the UDC and the concerns and requirements expressed in the specific agency impact statements reviewed by this staff report dated November 30th, 2021. 
I think that gets it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, since uh, since the county is the one bringing this application, and Mr. Schaefer has already presented the uh, findings and the recommendations, uh, planning and zoning board, do you have any questions of Mr. Schaefer? M Mr. Chair, I would go into yes, the sir. public hearing part and then do the questions. Oh, okay. Uh, absolutely. Uh, we will open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this application, uh, please unmute oh, your oh, system. Oh, oh. State your name and address for the record, then make any comments you would like. You would have three minutes per person for a total of 30 minutes. Go ahead, if anyone wishes to speak in favor. My name is Amy O'Shields. I am the president of the Homeowners Association for British Mills, which is adjacent to the property of okay, the church. You please, would you please state your address, please? 5159 Calgary Drive. My okay. backyard rep um, is on Reynolds Road. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Um, I am concerned that all parties who are connected with this were not notified prior to the notification. Um, I recognize that a sign was put on the property, um, but am concerned that everyone who is affiliated would not have been notified. Uh, although there is no proven fact that there is a health risk for a cell tower, and I appreciate the fact that it might look like a tree when I'm in my backyard and I look over to my left, I see the tree line at that church. And is that tree actually gonna look like a tree? I mean, what is it really gonna look like? Because I see a rendrance, but I don't see what it actually looks like. And how does that affect my neighbors and my property owners who I protect through as their president of this HOA? next door, next door, next door, next door, and phase two going on. How does that affect us? What does it actually look like? And will it improve our service? What is the service actually going to serve? Okay, does that conclude your comments, Ms. O'Shea? Oh, Shields, yes. Oh, Shields, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. We appreciate your comments. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this no. application, please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record. You would have three minutes. Hearing none, I will close the public hearing in favor of the application and open the public hearing in opposition. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application, please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record. You would have three minutes per person for a total time allocated of 30 minutes. Okay, my name is Robert and Joanne Gunn, and we live at 3523, and we are directly, directly, and we're in the Chapel Hill golf course community, and we're directly behind the town next to the tower our property was roughly about i went out and measured it and i i saw the trees that are are marked uh in the area where this um tower will be and we're roughly about 30 feet away from it the back of our property now i understand and we spoke to mr schaefer in regards to uh one of the the things that <coughs> the young lady just mentioned um, about, about the health. health issues that may be opposed, but there's nothing that, that tells me uh, for, certain. for certain that the rays or the, um, the emittance from the tower will not affect us in the, in the future. So um, there's some concerns. There is definitely some concerns here. We just read some articles that that directly refute that. 
400, uh, what was that? 400 professionals, medical professionals. Medical professionals. I'll let my wife read that part. And there's, there's actually one that says 2019 resolution, the US doctors and experts wrote to President Trump calling for a halt to the 5G towers. Um, they even stated that we call for a monitorium on 5G and any further wireless antenna intensification until potential hazards for human health and the environment have been fully investigated by scientists independent from the wireless industry. So there's truly a concern if these doctors can actually voice and state letters um, saying that there's a possible hazard we have some valid concerns surrounding that. True, there's nothing in writing, nothing in stone, but um, we don't have anything on the other end that says it's fine. So as homeowners, we are definitely concerned. And, it, and it's too new to say that they, they, can, they can say for certain that this won't cause a problem. Our house is one of those pictures, is one of those houses that we just saw the picture of on the screen. Our house okay, was- You have 15 house. seconds. Yeah. Our house was to the right in the cul-de-sac of, of the picture that you displayed earlier. In addition, we don't even know if this is going to have any adverse effect on our home value down the road. I right. can't say that for certain. So, um, you know. Okay. We're, we're just... And we're paying a hefty property tax here. All right. Thank you very much. Your, your three minutes is up. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition to this application? <laughs> Yes, Thomas Michael Johnson. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I, I'm Robert's neighbor. My house was on the left in that picture you showed. Would you give uh, us your address, please? 3525 Red Maple Court. Thank you. All right. So, it, as he was saying, it is directly by my house. Where I parked my truck in my driveway, it is 50 feet from the tree where they have it marked. Uh, this tower is going to be impeding my lot, his lot. And it's going to directly affect our property values. There's no doubt in my mind. Nobody wants a 100-foot cell tower in their backyard. Uh, there's There are, along with the health concerns, which, like I said, these 5G towers, they're, they're so new, there's no telling. You know, nobody knows the true effects of it. But, but there's erosion. Uh, I have two retaining walls within 50, 75 feet of this thing, one for my swimming pool, one for my driveway. What is the weight of this tower? The machine, we've had this buffer between our house and the church. I've been here for 19 years. Robert's been here for 21 years. It, it, this is it's ridiculous. Um, I've, I've played the golf course. I've been all in this area. Like I said, I've been here for 19 years. I'm, I don't drop calls. I have great cell service in my house. This new subdivision, which is right down the hill, <laughs> it's going to be in clear view. Of, of British Mail subdivision. I, I don't understand the need for a tower. Like I said, I've been all over this county, all over the city, from the mall to the, to, to the golf course, all over. And I don't drop calls anywhere around here. So I, I'm worried mostly about the, the, the loss of property value as long as the health reasons. So I think it should be denied. That's my opinion. Uh, can I okay, ask thank, thank another question? Much. I know I already uh, spoke and I don't want to be out of turn, but again, concern for neighbors in Chapel Hill, Stewart's Mill, there are prop, there is property for sale um, that is not zoned private. It, it, it is zoned as, as, you know, public or or um, business property can can something like this not go there instead I mean ask the marathon gas station that just went through the whole ordeal this weekend they would probably Mr. Chairman. yes sir yeah, make sure you're adhering to your rule of timeliness please yes I'm, I'm keeping that time go ahead Ms. O'Shields I, I don't want to be out of turn. I'm just saying there is plenty of property in this area um, that would not pose conflict to residents in British Mills, Chapel Hill, Stewart Mill, 
and 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 still you know satisfy sales of of property that is for sale that is not residential that would be zoned commercial that could be hidden um in in and like the resident or like the owner of the marathon station on that that corner up the road here it would look perfectly fine there behind that store why put it behind our backyard or so that i have to turn my head and see it or somebody else has to turn their head and see it why do we have to see it put it at a gas station it's there's gas there put the tower there i agree 100 percent. okay does that conclude your comments mr shields yes it does thank okay, you okay thank you very much anyone else wishing to speak in opposition to this application please unmute your system you would have three minutes uh, my name is Tina Stanback. I'm at 5109 Calgary Drive, which is also in the British Mills uh, subdivision with Miss O'Shields. Uh, I am the property that shares kind of a backyard with the church. Uh, and before they start building uh, these current homes over here, I was the closest to um, where the sale tower would be. I went to the meeting. Uh, at the church with the attorney that's representing Dish Network. And I'm not a fan of it, like the other residents in the surrounding areas of the tower. I know most of us over here are using Xfinity or at and I don't think it's a lot of Dish Network usage in the subdivisions in this area. The pricing is not a competitive enough for me to see people you leaving one of the other major networks to go with Dish Network who will be over this projected tower. Uh, I do think that there are other non-residential areas where this tower could go versus in the backyard of people that have been in their homes for 10 plus years and been paying increasing property taxes. Uh, I know for the last 10 at least um, that we're just not a fan of it. I don't think it should be placed there. I understand the church, that's their private property and they have the freedom to do with their property what they will. But when you're smack dead in the middle of several homes, several subdivisions, I think the voice of the public should take a bearing on the decision that the commission makes. That concludes my statement. Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak in opposition to this application? You would have three minutes. My name is Lisa Brown. I also live in the British Mills subdivision. I am, I believe, three houses down from this location of the church where they're proposing to put the tower. Um, my concerns are similar to the other people who have already spoken in opposition. Um, the location, the proximity to our homes makes all of us feel uncomfortable. And I think that is a consideration that should be taken um, seriously. Um, whether it looks like a tree or not, um, we do have serious concerns about the potential health hazards. And there are other locations that are in close proximity that would still be far enough away from our residential home. So it wouldn't be an eyesore for us. It wouldn't be um, as much of a health hazard for us. In fact, uh, just a little further down the road, right at the corner of Stewart Mill and Reynolds Road, they just went in and did some work on that particular area. I don't understand why it couldn't even be put over there where none of us have to see it and none of us have to be totally aware of the fact that it is present and it is potentially posing a hazard to our health. Okay, thank you very much for your comments. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition to this application? You would have three minutes. Hearing none, I will close the public hearing on this matter. Uh, Planning and Zoning Board, do you have any questions of Mr. Schaefer? Chairman, it's Rob. I do have a question. Go ahead. Hey, Mr. Schaefer, you mentioned that there is a uh, cell tower, I don't know, expert that uh, you would be consulting with. Is he available on the our, call? Our engineer is available for questions. I, I would help if perhaps I could also just 
preface why the tower location is where it is, if you will look at this again, you will see that the gas station to which they're referring over here at West Stewart Mill and Stewart Mill is considerably outside of the coverage area for this tower. And there is already a tower to the northwest of there that covers that. The tower that there that has been proposed at this location is filling in a tremendous cap gap in coverage. Now I'm gonna, I, I would like to just suggest a minute and a half on why this is important. The 5G network is one issue. However, broadcasting cellular wireless transmissions is a lease process through the federal government. When Sprint and T-Mobile merged, it re reduced the number of wireless carriers to three major carriers. When that occurred, there was a Department of Justice consent and decree, along with the FCC consent and decree review. One of the requirements of allowing that merger was that DISH Network would become the fourth provider of cellular service. And they have been tasked with providing coverage to 70% of the United States population by 2023. They are building a 5G network at fixed tower locations across the entire United States at this moment. I have personally processed 14 other tower co-location requests from the tower providers for DISH network in this county over the course of the last several weeks. This location is a tremendous gap in coverage. That is why they are proposed to have the coverage here. However, if the tower cannot be located here and we lose coverage, the consent decree and the Department of Justice consent orders that were granting the mergers and acquisitions for T-Mobile and at and I mean T-Mobile and Sprint, as well as the mandate for DISH network to provide services is jeopardized in terms of coverage and milestones. And so it is another indication how important this particular tower site is for the population of Douglas County, being one of the metropolitan area 11 um, economic piece, part of the economic area that, that DISH is required to cover under that order from the Department of Justice and the Federal Communications Commission. So I, I just, I'll, I'll turn it over to Chris Horn, who is our engineer, um, Commissioner Thomas, so that you can ask direct questions but that's part of why this tower location is critical. It can't go on the marathon. There's already a tower to the Northwest of there. And the location that they've chosen for the church is the only institutional use that allows for the coverage in this area. So, yeah, and I'm glad you covered that. Now, as far as any type, as far as danger of it collapsing, um, can we, can he, address the way it's designed to collapse? Hello, uh, Mr. Thomas, uh, this is Chris Horn. Uh, I'm an independent uh, engineering consultant. The, uh, this, this cell tower is made of uh, steel. It will look like a tree. Uh, it is designed to, in the rare event that it uh, catches on fire or something like that. In all my years of working in this industry, uh, maybe once or twice I have heard of a cell tower uh, being struck by lightning or, or the equipment having a problem. The tower will collapse on itself typically. It, does, it doesn't fold over like cutting a tree down. So it normally would collapse within the compound. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions about planning and zoning board? Hearing no questions, Madam Chairman, I'll yield the floor to you for questions from the uh, county commissioners. Thank you so much, uh, Chairman Simmons. Board of Commissioners, do we have any questions? Are there any remarks or questions, board? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Commissioner Guider. Yes, I would like to call on Kenny Bernard to uh, shed some light on this. Uh, yes, ma'am. 
<laughs> yes, Madam Chair. Um, so, so I think Phil has done a good job of explaining the why, but we, I think that the best I can describe this situation is federal law sets the rules for these kind of matters. Our code is set up encompassing the criteria that federal law allows us to consider, including the, the charging of a fee for purposes of having an expert evaluate the evaluation criteria that's in our code. And so what this board and what this planning and zoning body is limited to is just the criteria that has been gone over by Phil and the staff has recommended approval based on that criteria criteria. While I understand the concerns of everybody that's voiced concerns, federal law limits you to the criteria that's been put in front of you. And uh, that we didn't choose this site. We didn't choose to have a monopole here. We didn't choose to make an application. We're following up because we're already in court on a related matter. And this is an attempt to resolve one of those matters before it reaches where it reaches the taxpayer's pocketbook. So the best I can say without saying any more, uh, Madam Guider and Madam Chair and board members is our hands are tied because the criteria is what is established by federal law. That evaluation has already been made before this meeting. It's been submitted, it's gone up the chain. This evaluation essentially is the same evaluation as before. Is that correct, Phil? Correct. Yeah. So in other words, we're locked on what the evaluation and the findings are. We're locked as to what our own expert who's separate from has no ties to the company that's making the original application. And so here we are. So <laughs> while I hear the concerns, I do want to advise the board that and the planning and zoning board that you are limited to the criteria that's been put uh, in front of you by the staff report. And you can see the staff report's findings and based on those findings, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be imposed on us with, with monetary costs if y'all don't do it yourself. That's all I can say, Madam Guider, is that sufficient? Yes, sir, and I appreciate that. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. Any other questions for it? Madam Chair. Vice Chairman Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I, I, I concur with uh, the counselor's commentary. Um, you know, we may be four, four aces, but got the state, which is a low joker, and the feds is a high joker. It's an overrule. Maybe that's the federal government. We've got to comport. Uh, I think uh, the simple comment, though, is what I see is citizens who actually are aware of this, which was my position all along. Are y'all aware that this was happening? No. It's, important, but it, it's okay. I know, I know. And I'm just, I'm, I got to talk to staff. I got to stay in my lane right now. This is we're, we're, some rules right now. So, Phil, this is important. I'm talking to staff, which is, it, it's always important to acknowledge the citizens, no matter who, what, where. Because again, it's, it's localized. We still have to make the call, but at least, at least let them know. Let them know when we do have true control, we have control. When we don't have control, like in this situation where they can override us, when we, we, we could be violating, then okay. But they need to know this in some kind of way. As you go through this UDC, is there any way we can enhance and ensure that these types of situations, you know I mean, I hear it, it's antitrust. I get it. Thou shalt do. It's federal. Guys, we, we minimum wage. We, we don't have the weight to go against something at, up at the federal level. But at the same point, it's still the uh, it, it just acknowledging that these deals are our citizens. And since they put us in play to make decisions on their behalf, there still needs to be some type of uh, notice versus just sort of a roll through. And it's just, a, is there anything, any room? I, you may not be able to answer this today, but I think that's important since you already put 14 on the table already and you got many more to go. I think that that should, I think at a minimum, um, looking at how notice can be enhanced to ensure that if it's, if, if it's 400 feet or 4,000 feet, I don't know what the right answer is. It's just the notice, it's just communication. 
It was just communication and, and, and letting them in on this and hearing them. But I understand business. I understand the federal. It's just that. That's all I want to say. It was about the communication, um, duly noted. But this is um, federal outranks local. And I think most people on here who understands how government works, we know how that works. And uh, we have to respect that. But uh, Phil, can you just make that note for the record that you heard my voice? I hear you, Commissioner Robinson, and, and just to confirm you, we always send notice to the adjoining owners, and we were, we're making efforts at trying to improve the community meetings as well. So next year, there will be an improvement in that process. Awesome. That's all I need to know. And I'm sure I have to yield. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman Robinson. Any other questions forward? Hey, uh, I have one for you, uh, Mr. Schaefer. Certainly, I'm... Um, um, you know, all I do is health and my background is healthcare. So, you know, I have some grave concerns about radiation and the admission of radiation. Is this the only area? And I know uh, I heard uh, the vice chair said that the federal government is the high joker. But if they're the high joker, why are you bringing this before the board of commissioners? First of all, to discuss, because I want to weigh in, but I may not agree with the federal government, but I know I'm hearing this board loud and clear, but at the same time, can you answer the question? Is there another area that is conducive that will limit exposure to the citizens? Or is this the only spot that the government, the federal government has chosen? Are there any other options? In terms of locating the tower that would serve this immediate area, it is approximately a one and a half mile radius to a two mile radius. This is the only location that provides the elevation and coverage that will clearly allow for the transmission of DISH network to cover and fill in the gap. There isn't another institutional use in the residential zoning in, in sufficient proximity to this location to do that same job. Okay, so is that your opinion or is that set in stone? I'm just asking because typically when what happens, there are other options, not just one. Um, well, it, so yes. was there something else? I may, you, you may not be able to reach all the citizens for 100% coverage, but everybody well, and, and it, and just, just to try and I, I finish, Bill. Oh, I'm sorry. 100% 100 of our citizens don't need this dish. And they've made that very clear to us. So I'm asking you, is there, there is there a way that we can work with the federal government to see if there's another spot? It may not give us 100% coverage, but it may give us 75 to 80% to satisfy this 5G need. I realize that 5G is the high joke right now. Is there another option? I, I don't have another option for you, to be perfectly honest. I, I don't know how to correct the location of this to cover where this needs to be given the existing towers that are around this. If you don't build something in this one and a half to two and a half mile radius, you won't have coverage in this area. And we run, run the risk of reducing the coverage percentages that have been required of the developer from the DOJ and the FCC. And that's the, that's the critical issue. If they cannot get a tower in this particular vicinity, it drops their percentage of coverage in the area below what would have otherwise been available. And that may run afoul of the mandate from the DOJ and the FCC. Okay. I heard the word run afoul. How much time do we have left? The clock is ticking. I realize that, but can we uh, is this is it an, uh, is this time sensitive or do we have a little more time from the federal government to see if there uh, uh, there's an option or this is it? What what are you asking me? Because, June of 2022. Uh, right now, I feel like my hand is being dealt to me. Yeah, Madeline. I apologize. Uh, June of 2022 is their build out date for the 70 percent coverage. Right. So, do we have any time left on the clock, Ma Madam Chair? You're in federal court on the same developer case where a federal judge could impose this on y'all and award fees and expenses. So the build-out date is one threshold. The other threshold 
is within days, our answer is due to a lawsuit, I think within a week, uh, a federal judge could impose his will or her will on you in the next 30 to 60 days, and, and it will be a monetary component to it. That's what we're trying to explain to everyone. Th this is here not because Phil chose to have a poll here or Kim Bernard chose to have a poll here. Somebody else did under a mandate with DOJ and the FCC for this fourth build out. And the rules are written very favorable. The criteria that you have, I think it was mentioned earlier, we changed our criteria some time ago in Douglas County to put, put an additional threshold on what it is that's being evaluated. So it wasn't being evaluated solely by staff. It included a component for a fee so that experts could be hired on the issues that are, that are pertinent per what we're allowed to evaluate. And the problem is that record's already established. It was established this summer. It can't be changed. And so you have a record, a record of, of approval, a record of your expert saying this is where it was okay to go. And the stuff that Phil's highlighted already, the record in the federal lawsuit is not going to be good for y'all. So that's, that's where we are. I get everything else, but we, that's our focus. Madam Chair? Um, I, okay, Vice Chair, you have the floor, but I, was, I wanted to just leave it for the record. My hand will not be dealt to me. I hear you very loud and clear, Attorney Bernard, but right now you, you're forcing me to take a hand that's not satisfactory to me when it pertains to health care. So I'll yield, I'll yield to you right now, Vice Chair, as I think this through. Vice Chair, thank you. you thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, this is, um, again, uh, thank you, um, Attorney Bernard, um, duly noted. Um, and, and this is for decision. This is important, but one of the roles that we do play, though, we're local. Um, a couple of years ago, I had an opportunity to go to Washington, D.C. And while we're sitting there with the entourage from, you know, Douglas County Chamber, you got the mayor, you got other people that are in the room. And this is Senator Isaacson's last, um, hurrah, it was his last meeting up there. And um, and I had a chance to meet, uh, we as a group got to meet with Congressman Scott and Senator Eisen. And my fundamental comment to Senator Eisen, I finally got to weigh in and make my statement. I was like, okay, Senator, how you let them do that G5 on us down here at the local level? This is a senator and a congressman issue. Hey, that's beyond my pay grade. But my job as an advocate said, look, Senator Eisen, like, really? Well, Commissioner Robinson, I know it just, it, it, that's, that's above us how they work with those. This is beyond us here locally. We don't even have to really grapple with this. Like, we, I mean, because I've got G5 coming in my district, and I'm like, okay, you're going to have Jetsons all over, over the place. Y'all going to put brand new wires, and oh my goodness, like, and we ain't had no say. Y'all just impose these rules, but it's federal. We are in court, and we're exposed. And Ken is trying to warn us, like, okay, stand down. But we have to say to the citizens what this is really about. This is really so write your congressman, write your senator, take that up there with them. I'll be glad to continue with that messaging on your behalf. But this is a matter before the, the board of commission right now. We've got a set of rules and things that we must comport. Um, uh, we're highly exposed and uh, this is not one you're gonna, we're gonna win. So anyway, Madam Chair, I yield back. I just wanna make that point that where this really lies is at the federal level, you do have representation, meaning the citizens to avail themselves of those individuals, but I have no problem in carrying the message well, but tonight is not going to be able to change that. I yield, Madam Chair. Okay. Any other remarks, board? Okay. If not, I yield back to you, Chairman Simmons. Thank you very much, Madam, uh, Madam Chairman. Planning and Zoning Board, you have heard the conversations that went on here. Uh, do I have a motion? Planning is on the board. I need a motion. Chairman, this is Rob Thomas. I'd like to make a motion, please. Go ahead, Mr. Thomas. I'd like to uh, shake the right 
if I got the right one here, I'm sorry. I make a motion to approve uh, with conditions uh, per staff recommendation uh, Z2021 73. Is that correct? 73 everyone? No, 74. S2021 74. 74, yes. With the uh, findings and conditions that were read into staff, it's read in the written record by staff. Thank you. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Frank Payne, second. Thank you very much, Mr. Payne. I have a motion and a second. Do I have any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll call for a vote on the motion to approve S2021-74. Uh, in favor, say aye. If you're against, say no. Rob Thomas? Aye. Uh, Tracy Knowles? No. Brenda Penniman? Nay. Mr. Curry? Nay. Mr. Payne? Aye. Mr. Nicholson? No. Thank you very much, planning and zoning. Uh, Madam Chairman, I will bring it over to you. We have a uh, motion to deny S2021-74. Or actually, we had a motion to approve, but it was denied. Thank you so so it comes to you with a negative recommendation. All right. Thank you so much, Chairman uh, Simmons. Board of Commissioners, you've heard all the questions and answers. Do we have a motion? Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. I make a motion that we approve S2021-74 with uh, the conditions and findings as read into the record by staff. Do we have a second? Board of Commissioners, do we have a second? Okay. Second. Okay. Commissioner Guider, second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion board? Um, I would just like to say, sometimes we just have to do what we have to do. Um, this goes against all my, my grain to do this, but um, unless someone wants to pay for the uh, legal fees, we're gonna have to do it. Thank you. All right, any other? comments board or remarks okay all right board district out when i call you district please respond accordingly district one district one district two yes district four yes district one no Okay, and Chairman, no. We have a two to vote. Attorney Bernard, call it what we got. <clears throat> Madam Chair, you can ask for another motion. Two, two won't carry if there's four in quorum. And we're missing one commissioner, district three commissioner tonight. Well, the only thing that the only thing that matters tonight is who's here and who's voting tonight. So two, two won't carry the motion. You can open up for another motion and see if you get any other motions, Madam Chair. All right. Yeah. Madam Chair? Mm-hmm. Right, I'm gonna make, make a comment, make a motion. Okay, you can make a motion, that would be great. Yeah, I'm gonna make my comment, which is to this point where we are, this is beyond us. Uh, we get principle, we get values, get what we stand for. We, 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 we did that before. Here we are, I, okay, no. You gonna feel this, you don't do this. You don't feel it. So I think we made our point. We made our point that the citizens were important, that they need to be notified. And this one's like, okay, you gotta know when to hold them home and walk away. You don't win against the federal government. Yeah, for the principle, but we got a, a bigger responsibility to keep the system moving. 
right? Keep the system moving, right? Everybody's point is made, but it, it will cost us for the I mean, So either way, we're going to do it. Either you do it now, or they're going to force you. There ain't no in-between. So you do it now, do it later, it's just going to cost you. Now, I, I get we got, you know, a, a, a nice fund balance, but you don't want to spend all that on this big lawsuit. They take a big chunk. That's just me, respectfully. And I'm sure I'd make another motion for reconsideration. I think I got that right, Ken. Reconsideration to approve um, application S2021-74 as recommended by staff, along with its conditions and findings. That's my motion. That's a motion, I'm sure. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, Commissioner Geiger, second. Okay, any discussion board? I, I have a question. This is for you, Attorney Bernard. Yes, ma'am. Um, my question to you, why am I, I'm gonna speak for me, myself tonight. Why am I being asked to vote on something when the answer has to be yes? And um, my hand is being dealt and you know how I feel about my hand being dealt to me. So my question to you, why is this coming before the Board of Commissioners to be voted on? Well, Madam Chair, I can't reveal the answer to that without revealing executive session discussions that I've had with this board but I can assure you that it would not be back before y'all without y'all knowing it was coming. We would just play that, play it out in federal court and see where we got. So it wasn't my decision to bring it back to you. That's all I can say. Okay. Any other discussion board? No, ma'am. Okay. Hold the question. Thank you. Are we Robert? You've already got, we have a motion on the floor. I was just, I had just a discussion question. All right, when I call you district, please respond accordingly. District one. No. District two. Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman, no. So it's two, two right now. So Ken, don't seem like we're gonna get in the way tonight. Yeah, that's it. Well, the motion fails, my, uh, Madam Chair. Yeah. And unless you want to call for another motion, you can move on with the meeting. Okay. I don't. I, I think we're locked right now, Ken. So. Um, well, you can't, you, you, Madam Chair. You, you don't have a choice of revisiting it until you can get a third vote. Uh, it, all you can do now is either call for another motion on it. Uh, or a motion to table it and have it reconsidered at a later date where you've got the five, but you don't have the motion to let it fail yeah, tonight and I'm bring it back table. up later. Okay, can we table? That's what I'm asking you. Is there enough time to table? You can, you can ask for another motion. Uh, and if that motion is to table to a date certain, it could be re re revisited on that date certain. Yes, thank you. All right. Well, board of Commissioners, um, certainly I'm going to call and see if there's a motion. I would like to make a motion to table uh, S2021-74 um, until a later date. And I don't have, do we have a date, Attorney Bernard? Is there a specific date? It, it, it would need to be, it, need to, it would need to be a specific date. Ron, are you there? January, January 4th is the next, is the first meeting in January. Is that the is that the next zoning meeting? That's the next zoning regular, meeting. Regular, okay. Regular, regular, schedule. regular zoning meeting. Yeah. Okay. So you would, if you had a motion to table, you'd have to. The motion would have to include that date for notice to the public, Madam Chair. So, yeah, January fourth, twenty twenty one. Okay, Board of Commissioners. Twenty twenty two. Twenty twenty two. Wow, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to table? Uh, Z, I mean, S2021-74 until January 4th, 2022. I move. Do we have a second? I'll second it, second. We have a motion and a second. Board of Commissioners, when I call you district, please respond accordingly. District one. District one. No. 
District 2. District 2. Yes, Caitlin. District 3. Oh, well, she's not here. District 4. Yes. Chairman, yes, we have a 3 1 vote, and the motion carries to table this item until January 4th, 2022. All right, Board of Commissioners, we're going to move on. All right, I yield back to you, Chairman Simmons. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Mr. Roberts, would you introduce the next agenda item, please? Yes, sir. Uh, if we could bear with us, we do have the, our, our typical end of the year uh, uh, UDC updates, plus, we have the uh, uh, approval of the official zoning map to take care of. Um, and uh, that's what's actually pulled up. So we'll take do the official zoning map and then we'll go into the UDC updates that we do that we brought forward and that is in your packet. Um, uh, would you like me to give a staff report on both the map and the text amendments or per Mr. Roberts, shall we go ahead and uh, take the, the zoning map update? Um, we are not proposing any changes that you guys have not already approved. Um, in 2021, we are just incorporating all of those changes uh, into the official zoning map as we do every year. Okay, most people go through if there's, any, there's no questions on that. This is just the update for the end of year zoning map. So we can go through the UDC updates, Allison. Okay, great. Do we, do we need to vote on, uh, do we need to call that question and vote on that before we move to the updates, mm -hmm. Mr. Roberts? Yeah, we can do that, or we can just we can go through them all and, and, and do them collectively. Well, that would be better. Go ahead, man. Let's do that. Okay. Um, sorry, let me get this move in the right direction. Uh, so, in, in regard to the zoning map, as I had said, you know, we are not proposing any changes that you have not already voted on and approved. Um, this is just the the annual update um, of the map that incorporates all of those changes. Uh, so, we will have the official adopted map. Uh, available to the public uh, in the planning and zoning office. Um, we are also proposing a series of text amendments. Um, you received a rather lengthy copy um, of this information as a part of your packet. Uh, so I just wanna clarify, um, we're, we're taking these um, in, in a couple of rounds. You will recall that in December of 2020, um, my colleague, Mr. Schaefer, uh, presented a, a series of text amendments um, to the Unified Development Code uh, that, that really represented the heavy lift on the policy changes. Um, so at that time, that was when we uh, realigned our zoning districts and introduced some new concepts. Um, so when I say he took the heavy lift on the policy changes, that's what y'all saw last year. Um, the majority of these edits just continue to clarify and organize content from those round one edits. Um, so, so just by way of contrast, what I'm presenting to you this evening, um, in, in my opinion, doesn't represent a lot of substantive policy changes. It represents a lot of minute tweaks and, tweaks and fixes uh, and cross-references to, to make sure that all of the policy changes adopted last year um, are going in the right direction. Uh, the one new substantive policy change um, is Article 7. That was the sign ordinance. We did not introduce that um, in December of 2020. Um, basically, uh, in this update of the sign ordinance, we just did a thorough review to remove all of the language that was not content neutral. Um, that's basically in compliance with a Supreme Court case uh, that came down and has been interpreted to provide some, some clarity about what content neutral language is in regard to your sign codes. Um, and we also made some minor updates to our language regarding billboards. Um, specifically, we just added text that's a little bit stronger in regard to digital billboards. Um, should we ever get any requests for digital billboard in unincorporated Douglas County? Um, beyond that, we are presenting amendments to articles 5, 8, 9, 10, 12, and 13 at our January meeting. Um, we are presenting amendments to articles um, 3, let me see, 3, 4, and 7 this evening. Um, there's no particular reason that we did it that way other than we just didn't want to overwhelm you with content um, tonight. Um, and then the final thing that I will clarify, a lot of the text that was taken out of the 2020 updates is being moved into a companion document that includes illustrations and additional guidance. Um, that will be developed in 2022. Um, it's not anticipated that it will function as law, but it will rather function as design guidelines for the convenience of the user. Um, so I'm going to pause there uh, and ask if there is any particular need to go through all of the minutia of the text amendments. You were presented with that in your packet and we're prepared with a rather lengthy slide deck that we can go through point by point, um, but it may be more efficient uh, in the interest of time since everything has been posted on the website uh, and notice has been given. Um, 
to, to just see if there's anything that, that you require specific clarification on so I can um, be respectful of your time this evening. Thank you so much, Allison. Does that include, include your comments, Ms. Duncan? Uh, that concludes my initial comments, but I, I am uh, on call to, to answer any specific questions about any of the text amendments, uh, if you would like, or if anybody would like us to, to go into greater detail on the proposed changes, we are prepared to do that um, this evening, if that is the will of the board. Okay, thank you very much, but I believe in, at this particular time, we need do need to open the public hearing on this matter. Am I correct, Mr. Kent? Correct. All right, anyone wishing to speak in favor of these uh, UDC text amendments, please unmute your phone or your system, state your name and address for the record, and you would have three minutes per person for a total of 30 minutes. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Hearing none, anyone wishing to speak in opposition to these text amendments, uh, please unmute your system, state your name and address for the record. You would have three minutes per person for a total of 30 minutes. Hearing none, we will close the public hearing on this matter. Uh, any questions from the Planning and Zoning Board of, for Ms. Duncan? Hearing none, uh, Madam Chairman, I'll yield the floor to the Board of Commissioners if they have any questions concerning these uh, changes for the uh, UDC updates. Thank you so much, Chairman Simmons. Board of Commissioners, do we have any questions at this time regarding the UDC updates? Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Vice Chairman Robinson. I mean, since this is an aggregation of decisions that we've already made, there's no need for, for, for me personally to go through a PowerPoint presentation of things that we've already decided. So. I trust the staff has duly did their due diligence, done their homework, and they're prepared. They've tabled it. We do have the information, but then that's just me. I yield. I just want to make that comment. Thank you so much, Vice Chair. Um, District 1 and District 4, are you okay with uh, Vice Chair comments? I'm, I'm in agreement. It's okay yes, with ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. I agree. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Agreed. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Mitchell. All right, with that being said, I'll yield back to you, Chairman Simmons. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Planning and Zoning Board, do I have a motion? Planning and Zoning Board, do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, it's Kurt. Chairman. Uh, I recommend approving all the uh, amendments as presented by staff. Can I have a motion, do I have a second? A second, Rob Thomas. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. I have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion planning and zoning board? Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, point of order, if we could include the, the, the zoning map as well in the motion. Okay, uh, Ms. Nicholson, could you go back and uh, remake that motion to include the adoption of the official zoning map? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the code amendments as presented by staff and include the official update of the zoning map. Okay, thank I you second. very much. Mr. Thomas, do you second that? I second. <laughs> thank you very much. I have a motion, I have a second. Do I have a uh, discussion? Okay, uh, no discussion. I will call the question. Everyone wishing to vote in favor of the Unified Development Code text amendments and the uh, motion to approve the Douglas County zoning map, uh, please answer in the affirmative. Uh, Mr. Thomas. Yay. Ms. Knowles. Yay. Mr. Penniman. Yay. Mr. Curry. Yay. Mr. Payne. Yay. Mr. Nicholson. Yay. Thank you very much. Madam Chairman, I will throw it over to the Board of Commissioners with a recommendation to approve the UDC text amendments as presented by staff and to approve the Douglas County zoning map. Thank you so much, Chairman Simmons. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve the UDC text amendments as presented by the planning and zoning staff? So, Madam Chair. Um, what? 
So moved. Do we have a second? order? Okay. Madam Chair, can we add the map along with that? Can y'all fix yes. that? You just, thank you. <laughs> thank you. The text amendments as noted in the UDC Board of Commissioners, I would like to make a motion to, uh, for the text amendments of the UDC as, and also the map to include the map as, uh, and, uh, as stated by the uh, Planning and Zoning Committee. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Do we, do we have a second? We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. I'm going to call your district. Please respond accordingly. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District four? Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 4 0 unanimous vote, and the motion carries. Okay, I yield back to you, Chairman Simmons. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Uh, I don't believe there's anything else on our agenda to tonight, so I will adjourn the Planning and Zoning Board and turn it over to the Board of Commissioners Chairman, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, Chairman Simmons, and thank you to the citizens of Douglas County and also Board of Commissioners tonight. Board of Commissioners, are, do you have any further remarks uh, to make regarding this meeting, Planning and Zoning no. meeting? No, ma'am. Okay, if there are no more uh, further comments from this Board of Commissioners uh, and from this body, this meeting is adjourned and have a great night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank, Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks, right. guys. Thank you, Madam Chair. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.